live, Jaglones. How are we doing tonight? Um, we have some good things in store for you. If you want to know how to do um, an expo, this is the right episode to tune into So uh, and to get the questions answered that you want answered. So if you know a friend that wants to do an expo, just throw them a message and send them the link. Like, get them in here now. Um, we have, we'll knock out all the stuff first. We have patreon.com. We have, uh, they're all in the bio. We have, or in the, in the info to this, the description, the description, the bio of this video. Um, yeah, we have Patreon. We have fourth wall. We have merch. Um, at least go look at the merch to see the descriptions because I took no time at all. They were all stream of consciousness and no filter and hilarious. So I think I I'm a very big fan of myself. Um, we also have a project I'm going to announce at the end of the video, but for now, let's bring on Nanette and her, um, her friend. I don't know. Some guy, Wally. Hey guys. Hi. For, for, for a strange, for were a you strange. going to say, well, you know what? I should lift my chair. I, I just was going to yeah. say strange, her strange husband. <laughs> so, that would not be strange. <laughs> Boom. That would be strange. Yes, that would be him. Uh, it would be more strange if you weren't her husband. Like you guys go together, like it's like oatmeal and raisins. So oh, and oh. marriage. <laughs> yeah, and I mean that like oatmeal and raisins go together. Like to me, they're delicious and they work. Mm -hmm. Those are great flavors. Mm -hmm. Some people they're just gross. So like <laughs> in cookies, they go together. Yes, oatmeal so cookies. good. I am such a fan of oatmeal and raisin cookies. <laughs> oh. Um. Who else, guys? Let's do a tally. Who's into the uh, who's into the oatmeal raisin? We got a lot of people. All your people are here. This is all your people. Laura Taylor, oh. Illinois Valley Gecko's never seen you before. Angie Schwartz is back. She's not yeah. out picking mushrooms tonight. Cassandra Pope, she shows up when you're here. Frank has been Frank is slowly coming over to the ISO buddies. Frank's everywhere. He's on his way. Yeah, Frank, tell him to like. Tell him like spike. Tell him to do that thing. Yeah, Tell people me. always join in like five minutes later, Angie. It's awesome. Oh, there we go. There's one of my people. Green Jedi Monkey's here. Perfect. And he was here for the oatmeal raisin combo. Um, anyway, we're gonna get to top and moon. Okay, moon's here. All right, that's the last one I'm gonna introduce. Uh or, if, if moon is here, we're ready to go. Let's go. What do you mean? We, we can't I know, and that's falling asleep. So um tonight, Wally, I wanted you to come on so that you could talk to us about I don't need that. Uh, well, more importantly, Nanette, uh, the ins and outs of, let's say, I want to go to an expo and get a table and sell my IsoBuddy stickers because that's all I have for IsoBuddies right now, and autographs. I got autograph stuff. Uh, let's say I want to do that, um, and I want to bring a bunch of animals for display purposes. Um, I guess that would that's not a good analogy. Let's say I'm a breeder, and I want to bring <laughs> some isopods. How do we do that? Well, and, and that's the thing. You know, I could talk all day about geckos and bringing geckos and how to display geckos and how to show them and how to talk pricing on geckos. And, but these shows are not just about geckos. They're, what are some of the things, Nanette, that we've seen at some of these shows? Tinley. Tinley has waffles. Tastefully simple. T tastefully simple. Uh, waffles. Well, they have that bread that bread company too, the raisin bread, the cinnamon bread, that they always put right between two snakes. Well, I've seen all the like candle people and yeah, candle people, toys. Yeah. All the, the, the little like the dial, the little you buy the token and put yeah. it in and it's like that stack of yeah. No. Yeah, yeah those guys uh, books. Uh reptile Emily books. Um uh, uh plants. Plants, uh bioactive yeah. uh setups now. So it's just all over the place. And the reason that I'm bringing that up is that when we talk about this and when, when you're watching this uh, show tonight, don't think, well, while he's going to talk, while and Nanette are going to talk about geckos and how to show geckos and how to make money on geckos. Because it's not. Because shows are so diverse now that you'll find yeah. anything at a show. Um, I bought a, a Trans Am at the last show that we were at, a, 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 you know, a, an 89 Trans Am. That was pretty cool, pretty sweet ride. So you can find anything at these really? shows. Really? I'm not going <laughs> to tell you. Nanette, do you have to go downstairs and get the big wooden spoon? <laughs> I'll just get Crystal. She'll hit him. Yeah, Crystal. There you go. Oh. Um, 
So what do you do uh, to prepare for a show? Let me start off by saying that no matter what you do, you're going to make mistakes. Um, we've done, sh- how long have we done shows? A long time. Just to give know. kind of a, a, you know, an idea. Give 15 an idea. to 18 years? We've done uh-huh. way over 100, maybe 200, 250 shows. So there was a point early on that we were doing shows for many years and it was almost comical that every single show we had to have forgotten something did you bring the pens that's comical. no it, it, it was it after funny a point. at the time well after the show it was funny not during the show because i stress out over stuff like that i i stress out really hard over stuff that we've forgotten and i get really quiet and i get really like serious right mm-hmm. But you're going yeah. to forget things. You're going to forget things. Make sure that you bring the essentials, bring the animals, bring the supplies, bring whatever you're selling. But there's all kinds of other ways, right? That's kind of important. I guess you're forgetting the animals. Like you're 10 minutes from whatever, <clears throat> some show out here, and they're like, oh, we forgot the geckos. Sort of, uh, um, so what – how do we even start this? How do we even start this? Okay. I, okay. I so a, I want to, let's say I want to do a uh, show me reptile show. What, just as an example. Or, um, or first off, I have to like, did, one did I, I scaled, up? scaled up? Let's talk about scaled up. Let's okay. Let's talk about scaled up. up. <clears throat> so, okay. So I have to find out <clears throat> if I want to do a show in my area, I have to find out like who to contact mm-hmm. to put a table up. Where do I do that? Jump online, jump on Facebook, jump on Google, look up shows in your area. Wisconsin Reptile Shows, Wisconsin Reptile Expos. Look it up, find the page, and you'll always find a coordinator or a number, a phone number that you can call to find out about the show. And we're very lucky in Wisconsin because we have some wonderful, wonderful show coordinators, Mm -hmm. uh, show sponsors that do such a great, great job with these shows. And they want nothing more than for you to come to the show as a vendor, as a um, a, a visitor, and be knowledgeable on what you're doing. And they'll walk you through the the whole process. They'll tell you what you need to to bring, what what your expectations are. They'll give you links on the show information. Uh, That's that's really your first starting point. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I say this every time I talk about a show. Go If you're going to vend, and I've got some notes on some beginner, intermediate, and advanced uh, points that I want to bring up later, but yeah. you know, I can't overemphasize this. If you're going to vend a reptile show, get the basic information first, obviously. Then go to a show and don't vend. Go to a show mm-hmm. and look around. Go to a show and... Look at every single table, talk to the vendors, talk to the breeders, talk to the show coordinator, uh, because they will be there, and find out more information. Talk to every vendor that you can. Go to every vendor's table and look at the table. Is this what I want to do for my show? Is this the setup that's very similar to what I do? Um, I sell geckos. We sell geckos. We sell gecko supplies. We sell isopods. We sell isopod supplies. Who else does that in a show? I'm going to go to the show and I'm going to look around and I'm going to look at tables that do something similar to what I'm doing. And I'm going to say, I like that about what they're doing. I like that what they're, about what they're doing. I don't really yeah. like what, like that what they're doing. Or I'm going to look at a snake guy or girl and say, wow, their uh, display table is really cool. I want to do something like that. Take your camera, take pictures. Hey, do you mind if I take a picture of your table? Um, I just want to kind of get a feel for. I might be doing some shows in the future. Do you mind? I really love your table. Can you, can I take a picture? And ninety nine point nine percent of the time, they'll say, "Yeah, please, go ahead." I say no. What? I say no. You say no all the time. You do. So that's why people come to me and talk to me instead of going to you all the time. I, that's what I think, right, Angie? Must be. Must be. <clears throat> Have business so, cards. That's good advice. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Add your notes. That's on your my list. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I think the very first thing that you want to do is do the research if you're going to do a show. If you have an inkling of, of hey, I might, you know, I've got some extra crusty geckos or I have some, th- I love to 3D print and I love printing reptiles and, and I think it's pretty cool. 
I want to do a reptile show. Go to a reptile show and look around. Pay the ten or fifteen dollars or whatever you know the entry fee is, and walk around and take pictures. Yeah, yeah, um, and and see the five hundred other people that printed out a bunch of crested geckos that are <laughs> articulated. <laughs> good luck, good luck. Sell them cheap. That's all I can tell you right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's so much. Everywhere I go, there's so much, and it's great. It's good stuff, but there's everybody's doing it. It's wild. Mm -hmm. um, so okay, so I contact my vendor, I reach out, and in my case, I was already like, I would research the other people that have been to that expo and check out their page, find out who's going this year, and check out their page, um, see what they're doing, you know, what kind of stuff they're bringing. I would go kind of nuts. I would go down the rabbit hole and stress myself out really hard. Um. Mm -hmm. So then you see the vendor and you see your, well, not the vendor, you see the expo. Do you have an idea? Do they give you kind of an idea of the volume or the traffic that's going to happen there generally? Yeah. I, I yeah. Go ahead and jump into that. <clears throat> I think you just walk in and you get a feel. You get a feel for the volume. Yeah. Um, I don't think that you, you know, I've never stressed about numbers. I've never gone to the show chairman, show coordinator and said, how many did we have walking through the door today? How many people... And yeah. I've never really much other than to tr try to be personable and to be nice with other vendors. I've never really gone around and said, hey, how, how did you do with, I, I might ask that question, but it's more, you know, to to see if I can lend a hand with anything to, to just kind of, you know, strike a conversation. I don't worry about that at a show. I worry about it. Here, here's how I am. I worry about it when I get home. You know, and then we put together the numbers. Um, that's kind of like the last thing that we do. We put together the, the numbers so I can put it in our spreadsheet. And at that point, it's like, how did we do? Did we do okay from a financial standpoint? But, you know, I'll, I'll say this too. Finances are like the last thing that you need to worry about. You need to worry about when you do these shows, you're making contacts. I, I've said to Nanette over and over again, we'll introduce something new like the Supreme Ice Pod Chow, uh, Supreme Feeder Food. And I'll I'll tell her we're not going to sell it for a while. We're not going to sell it this show. We're not yeah. going to sell it the next show. It's not going to be the third or fourth show. And then maybe some at some point after that, you know, sales will start trickling in. It's getting your name out there. It's mm -hmm. getting people to know, oh, that Supreme Gecko table has gecko. So the next time I... I really like crusted geckos, but I know that that show, that 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 uh, scaled yeah. up expo show, has <laughs> shameless plug. Shameless has, plug <laughs> has uh, lots of really cool animals, lots of cool displays, and that supreme gecko table has some pretty nice crusted geckos. So put the thought in people's heads. So that's really what you want to think about. The numbers, they'll come later. You know, you worry about the numbers way, way, okay. way after you start doing shows and you can refine. At Initially, you want to go and you want to play around. Like we've talked about YouTube videos. You know, it, the first few that you do, they just don't matter. All that they are is I'm going to put something out there and I'm going to learn and I'm going to uh, understand what I need to uh, change to improve. Yeah. See, I haven't changed anything since we started. That was that was <laughs> it's been the exact same. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's building. It's building. Um, yeah, we got this great backdrop that you can hardly see. Um, <laughs> we got our co-host Bingo, who has a burrow now, apparently. So she's happy. <laughs> I just found that she had a burrow under the plant over here. So she's she's excited. It's a permanent structure now that she built. So I'm proud of her. Um yeah, I just, I get so, uh, uh, well, I'm as a customer, I get so uh, overwhelmed that it's got to be something, um, well, besides the people that I go to see personally, like I'll go to see you and Annette or um, Ryan Marshall, if he's still here, Ryan and Jessica, uh, or is it, yeah, Jess, um, whoever else, uh, Ben Quintana, just, you know, all of my buddies, the, the folks at Crosstown Exotics, Um but in the meantime, I'm looking around to see other animals to see, just to see cool stuff and to see if anybody would make a good guest. So far, so far, not a single one. But uh, <laughs> I have so many business cards. Well, yeah, but I didn't meet you at an expo. 
We do. We talk. We talk in the next meet you there, though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. I didn't meet you well, there. I stalked you first. I was thinking about this before. And then I actually came to meet you. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. thinking about this before the show. I feel like maybe like a Steve Martin from SNL. You know, I should have a jacket or something for how many appearances I've made on your show. I, I feel like I should. You know, yeah. <laughs> I should send you a button or something. Yeah, that's, uh, kind of a button, basically yeah. a co-host at this point. Yeah. <laughs> you were for like three weeks. It was great. Those it's, were the it's days. Always been my pleasure and, and honor. Thank you. I love it. Um, so now I'm thinking, like, what are the considerations you take for transport? Because I know you try to stay semi-local. So, what's your <clears throat> personal? boundary like what's your personal area or, or, or limit that you're going to drive well it it depends it really depends so we used to do okay. scott smith's show down in illinois and that was almost two yeah hours, about two hours two, two and a, half. a little yeah you're mm -hmm. right a little bit over two hours for us that's not bad and that was comfortable that was comfortable that but that was right on the limit for us and after we we grew a little bit we started doing some more local shows than anything <laughs> And the store took off, you know, the Scream Gecko store took off. So it wasn't imperative that we were at all the, the Scott Smith shows. And so that was a little bit, you know, it, that exceeded where we really wanted to, to spread out um, our vendor, doing a vendor at a show. So I right now. I saw you there. I wonder if I saw you there before. I, I know I've seen you there for sure because I used to go all the time. But I know I'm trying to think if I might have stopped by because I was into Krusty's for a while. We like did. just fascinated by them. I had one. I've, I've owned two in my life. Nice. Um, I we must did have. Scott Smith's show probably for four years. Yeah, every other weekend. Every other weekend. Every other weekend for four years, as well as all the other shows in the area, like Sewer Dust and Wire, and there was a Lake County show mm -hmm. that we were doing once a month. Okay. Yeah. So we were doing a lot of shows back then. Um, now we're at around a dozen shows a year. Uh, but for our limit, we did St. Paul recently. We went up uh, in the fall and okay. did St. Paul. But we had, you know, we were going to Snake Discoveries as well. So it kind of played into the cards for us to do that show. And that weekend we did Snake Discovery, uh, the St. Paul Show Me Show. And then we hit on Sunday, we did the uh, the Scaled Up Show in La Crosse. Okay. Uh, so that was an adventure. But I would say probably I would say lacrosse is probably our furthest. Yeah. So that's we'll about go. an hour and a half, okay. two hours. Two and a half hours at yeah, least. Two and a half, you're right. That's it okay. It depends show. on the day, too. I mean, if it's a Sunday show with working on Monday, by the time you get home and unpack, and that's a lot figuring how much time we're gonna drive to go to a show because we don't stay overnight 99. I mean, we don't stay overnight before for any of the shows, except for when we went to the Minnesota because we made a weekend out of it. But yeah, so that's a long drive in the morning. So then you got to figure out how early you're getting up to get out there. And then you're coming home and how late you're coming home and putting away everything and getting organized then for the week gets hard. So I don't know if anybody saw your pictures from the, I think it was two weeks ago, you posted a picture of the three of you <laughs> in the car. And it's just, you can always barely see your granddaughter in the back, Crystal. I, I can't remember. I, I was going to see Chandra. You should and see Crystal. how hard yeah. it is to pack when she does. I mean, we love having her there, and I love working around it, but I have to totally change. It's like Tetris. And back. It, it is. is. And it's it is. like what I'm putting things. I will literally change stuff into a large tote bag for items to be able to put down on the floor so that I can fit her in the back seat right now. <laughs> it, it's tight. So do you? Do you have an idea in your vehicle of like, do you know, like, okay, we could bring this many uh -huh. geckos and this much food mm -hmm. and the banners and all that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you I mentioned... know what I can take and I know what I can't take. And if we, we increase much anything else, we're in trouble. You mentioned at the start that Nanette is the brains behind this whole operation, especially with the shows. 100%. You know, I'm in charge of the animals. I'm in charge of, you know, which animals go. And catching the animals, cleaning the animals the day of, you know, that yeah. morning before we head off to the show, and putting the animals on the table, talking about the animals, putting them away when we get home. That's it. If I'm packing the car, I'm yelling at Nanette, I need a bigger hammer. 
Um, it would be really bad. It would be really bad. I get frustrated. Like I said, I get frustrated very easily with stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Laura wants to know if one day of a show is worth it. Yes. Like if you're, yeah, one day. Okay. I would rather do a one day show than a two day show anymore. We've done a few two day shows and it seems like the first day is really, really full and busy, but then you're exhausted by that night. You worry about your animals because now you have to leave them in the facility. You don't get to take your animals with you. You have to normally leave them there. So you're leaving yeah. them there. Then you're getting up early the next day to go in and clean them all. And it seems like the second day is never as busy as the first day. And it just kind of drags them. And financially, we yeah. don't see a difference ever if we, we do two to one. We, we haven't done uh, any RBC Tinley for a couple of years now, but that was a show that two days is well worth it because we would hold back animals the first day and bring out different animals the second day. Not better, just different, just a different collection of animals. Yeah. And we always did really, really well the first day and the second day and, and Friday as well. Mm -hmm. you know. But, but for local shows, especially if you're doing a one-day show and then you know in the middle of the year they do a two-day show, never okay. ever pay in my mind in, yeah. in our in my opinion it never ever pays off it it never exceeds what we would normally get on a one-day show ever so it's, it's, it doesn't matter it's pilot. Well, so that, angie's got in there she's she should start letting us use her honda pilot for shows we might have to say something renting when you get crystal a driver's license and she just comes behind you like a caravan there you go. Or Angie could come right behind us. We'll pack your, your pilot, and then you can just follow us up, Angie. Angie can sell mushrooms and white rot wood and all that oh, stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All that stuff. People will buy all that stuff, Angie. Mm -hmm. You can make a killing. <laughs> it costs you nothing. Your overhead is zero. That's your overhead. Yep. So everything you, you make, pure profit. <laughs> yeah. Pure no. profit. Such a Wisconsin <laughs> response. Yeah. yeah. No. No. <laughs> Um, the Wisconsin response is, yeah, Nua. Nua? <laughs> That's northern. That's more north. Wait, That's what? That's like uh, Manaqua. Boat. They go on the boat. <laughs> yes. I'm in. So, okay, so you're packing everything in like a jig. Is that Crystal? She's peeking in. Hi. What's up, little homie? Uh, come here and say hi. Come and say hi. This is the first time Crystal's been on the show. <gasps> first time is on the really? show. Look at that. This is Josh's show. Say hi, Josh. Hello. We've met like twice, I think. Awesome. So how how do you like shows? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Crystal, what what's the best part of doing the shows for you? Um, Possibly setting up and setting down. Tearing down and setting up is the setting best Setting up. Part. Wow. And selling. Definitely. She's good at that. Setting up. Now, what part of selling them is your favorite? Like what part? Is it? Them handing over the many, and you just say cha ching. One for grandpa, <laughs> one for me, one for grandpa. <laughs> no. What's the what best you, part of the what selling? Like to, what, what do you like to sell? Probably weirdos. The weirdo geckos. You, you like selling the weirdo weirdos? Geckos? Selling so, two weirdos or selling weirdos? <laughs> you like the weirdo geckos. The weirdo geckos. She, she likes, likes to, hold, like to watch. She likes to hold some of the. The different animals, and she'll sit and she'll talk, and she will talk up a storm with people about the animals. She had a viper. Does a great job. And she had a wheeler eye the other day. She the held for the meal eye. Oh, meal eye, meal eye. She held the other day. The first meal eye, not in the first so, wheelie eye. I didn't say that. Oh, hey, what's a me what's, what is that? What is a wheelie eye? Uh, not it's a wheelie eye. eye. It's a meal a eye. Not she got mixed goes. up. Yeah, I don't know what yeah, that is. Up. What is that? It's a knob tail. What is it, Crystal? It's okay. like um, a gecko that has bumps on it. Okay. And a so little knob it? Is it like yeah. Braille? Is it like um, Braille? If I rub my fingers, can I read it? Is there a message? No. <laughs> no. You know, actually, actually, that one had a message. It was, Grandpa is weird. Oh, it worked. She's out. She's rolling her eyes like, oh, Grandpa's friend is just like him. Yeah. His <laughs> awful jokes. No. Oh, no. Hey, how are the um how are the black knights doing? Oh, they're doing great. Yeah? Do we have any eggs yet? Um, I had two babies hatch out last year. What? Last year. Mm -hmm. We haven't introduced yet, right? No. no. She's fattening them up right now. Yep. Yeah. Working at Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Congratulations. 
Thanks. Mm -hmm. Those were beautiful geckos when, yeah. uh, when Wally posted those. When your grandpa posted the pictures, I was blown away. Mm -hmm. We'll have to show some pictures so. of the babies, Crystal. Oh, yeah. I have two pictures on my phone. Do cool. I can send well, you have to send cool. grandpa sometime. Do you have the, um, are you going to the NARBC in Schaumburg in June? To visit. We are to visit. Crystal, are you going? Um, sure. We have to look at the sure. calendar. Okay. She hasn't All been right. to one of those big ones yet. I'm trying to convince Crystal that what we actually need for Supreme Gecko is somebody to help us uh, set up, tear down, sell geckos, and at some point during the show to videotape. Because I, I get at shows and I just lose track of time and I never get any any video at all of these shows. And I really need some video. Yeah. Well, that picture, I don't know if you saw the thumbnail, but the picture of me with that goofy face and the hand on the belly, and then that took that picture. Really? And then that took that picture. You're in it. Oh, I cropped you out because I wanted to see another <laughs> one of you funny. Everybody does but, that. I'm used to it now. I'm just grabbing a seat right now. If everybody oh, looks yeah. close, I, I flipped the picture of Wally too, so it says Supreme Gecko backwards. If you say it three times backwards, Wally shows up in your in your gecko room. So <laughs> that's, that's a it's scary show thought. Time. <laughs> that's a scary thought. Just I'm the like ghost with the most. Juice. Just like, yeah, just like Beetlejuice. Yeah, the host with the most. Hey, oh. That's yeah. fantastic. Uh, yeah. I'm so uh, right where were we? Tall. Where were we before we got to Crystal's favorite parts? The logistics. Um, we're getting into the logistics. So the Nanette, logistics. packing up. What's the what's the the order of packing up? Like your what goes in first? Um, what goes in next? The first thing that goes in the car always is the show boxes. There's two show boxes. And one of the okay, first show box important. has the lights and the electric. You always okay. want to have your electric with you. You don't want to forget that. And we have like a 25 foot cord at least with us. And then a couple yeah. um, outlet strips, but the lights and the electric go in first always. And then my second box has tablecloths. It has my riser stands in it with covers. Yeah, yeah. It'll have a box with my supplies, like my pen, my scissors, some tape extra labeling things, um, trying to think, spray bottle and water, um, paper towel are always in that box so that we have that at every show. Labels, extra deli cups, deli cups, paper towel. One of the things that I did, and I will admit this, this year our very first show in January, we hadn't done a show since November. We left, started for Green Bay, right? Was it Green Bay? I think it yes. was Green Bay. Yes. Started out for Green Bay, and we got about 20 minutes from the house, and I took a turn to the right, and Molly's like, you're going the wrong way. I said, no, we got to stop. I got to think about this, because we had fit Crystal in the car, and I had adjusted things, and I got out, oh, and I started okay. counting boxes. I left the show box at home. So we turned oh. around to come back home to get a show box, and it's the first time I've ever forgotten one, and it was the electric box. Had did I, gone did I yell? No, you didn't. You were um, quiet. I was very quiet. Um, when I get done, which when like I, I do is more I of a problem because it's quiet. Something quiet. Too yeah. fine. What do you need to say to Frank? Oh. Yes, Beetlejuice is coming out. Yes. Beetlejuice 2, Frank, is not coming out in September. It's coming out uh, in October. Oh, Frank. I think it's September. No. You better go check okay. that out. We'll have to check it My out. My dad Anyhow. said October. Okay. So those said, are the first two Frank. boxes that always go in. And then I always I make sure that I have the sign stand, which ends up on the back dash in the back seat because we have a stand, the pole. And I put that in there because the signage is already in the boxes as well. So the actual sign that yep. goes on the pole. So I always make sure those three things are in the car because those are the top three things I need at a show for sure. Then I, I start. The second show I met you guys at was the first one. You had the big stand. Is that uh -huh. right? Yeah. Yeah. It's bigger now. He's got a bigger one now. And then he's Ugh. got a couple other stands that he's added in with like those, I don't know what you call those, half circle. Uh, teardrop signs. Teardrop signs. Mm -hmm. So we oh, added yeah, those to the car this last time too. So that was fun. So that's in there. And this last time we did forget one of the poles for the stand because we changed out our new stand pole and we had tested it and forgot one of the poles. But we were able to Jimmy rig that up easy enough. Um, I we feel like Wally's talk. probably a pro at finding solutions with weird. Yeah. Well, as long as you got a few thing. bungee cords with you, you duct tape, good. duct tape, and bungee duct cords are working. You get um, Gor gorilla tape. Um, gorilla tape's the best. Best yes. ever. Yeah, right. 
Then the next stuff that goes in is normally the supplies, but I always leave the two spots in the back seat for the animals because they always go on the inside of the car so they're heated if they need it or right. cool if we need to. So the middle of the back seat is always the boxes for the animals. And then I just kind of build everything else around it. So in all guys, the, um, go, go, ahead. Ahead, Willie, go ahead. So in all of that, uh, two takeaways. Number one, we, we're not scrambling, you know, let's say the show is on a Sunday. We're not scrambling mm -hmm. Saturday to find everything. Mm -hmm. We're not scram. Oh my gosh. We're not scrambling Sunday to get everything. Did you, did you forget? Did you remember to grab the sign? Did you, that stuff is in yeah. boxes and the, they're ready out. to, they're ready to go to the next show the day after we do the previous show. Everything has a place in the garage on a shelf to okay. be moved into the car. So that's number one. Don't be thinking about stuff, you know, the day of, the day before, two days before. Have all that stuff in a box so you can bring that box to the show instead of trying to think of everything. You can always add to the box, you know, between shows, yeah. but have a box with everything or two or three or however many you need. Number two, of all the cheat and great question, Josh, what you were talking about, what when do you pack this? What do you pack? What was the last thing that we packed? Animals. 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 Always last. If animals don't go. If animals don't go and they don't go the right way, we ain't doing no show. The animals are priority one, period. We we do yeah. all this other stuff, but you know, the extra care is in the animals. Well, that was my that was my little follow-up question, good. I'm glad you circled back. So, so it wasn't real clunky. But um, so the animals, they're in their little contain. Well, they're not even little. Yours are pretty good size for the animals that you're bringing. Um, like, what is that? Like a pie dish? It looks like you could put a pie in there. No, I eat a lot of big. pie. They're not that big. I eat a lot of pie, so we have plenty of pie. Not dish. a regular size pie, but like a, pie, a little individual <laughs> serving pie. No. An individual serving pie, like this big. A lot of pie. We, we, use, we use a, a four and <laughs> six uh, ounce and a, uh, a six ounce. Uh, deli cup for our gecko. It depends on small geckos, you know, like uh, two, three month old crusted geckos. We use the four and uh, three quarter inch deli cups. Did, did uh, Crystal four. just kick a ghost out of the room? Is that what just happened? I saw no. a ghost come in and then Crystal just said, get out of here and shut the door. Um, That was my dog. Okay. All right. I thought it was a ghost. I was hoping we had ghosts on camera. He's like, um, animals also, Josh, are packed the day before for us. We don't pack anymore the morning of. We used to. So what they're ends in the up containers. Happening, they're in the yeah, they're in the containers. Yeah. What yeah. ends up happening is the everything is kept in the <laughs> show boxes ahead of time. Mm -hmm. It's always ready. If I have to restock, I will. But the end of a show, when I pack the show, I am yeah. very strategic on how my boxes are packed up so that it's not the Wally Christopher Jordan shows where everything just got swiped off the table into a box. What? I pack it so that it's organized and I don't have to re just go away. I don't have to repack it. Oh, oh, dad. What? Yeah, son, too? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's trying to defend us. Jordan. No, Jordan and I and Christopher, if we did shows, Jordan was way better than I, uh, myself guys. and Christopher. Good, Good night, night, Crystal. Crystal. Jordan, can you drop the salt in my So when Christopher and I would do a show, literally, it would be rake everything into the box because we're done and we want to get out of here. Jordan would be, okay, this one goes over on the right center mm -hmm. uh, of this box, box number three. Okay, now we have a set of pens. Pens go. So I like he would him. take his time and he would organize. And I, honest to goodness, I remember shows where we just wipe the table and put stuff in boxes. Hold the it box. Obvious. Hold the box. Okay, we're done. Let's get out of here. Yeah, no. Well, I, I have it all organized at the end of every show, and I have a list that I make at the show as I'm packing if I have to restock a box. So if I need to add isopod chow because I take a certain amount of everything to the shows, I know what I've already taken off the table. I'll say, okay, I need to add four bags of this or I need this. So I go ahead and I do that right away. And then when we come home, I can add it to those boxes yeah. immediately. Then the week of the show by Friday, Wally has gone through by Friday, Wally has gone through the animal list and he's handed me a list of what he will look at the last show list and then we'll add stuff to it. And he'll give that yeah. to me Friday night. Then I will spend time making the new labels and getting the cups all labeled. 
and then go downstairs ahead of time. And we will, before we start packing animals on Saturday morning, we will have the deli cups ready with the paper towel in them. And I have them in order in every section that we're taking in the facility, what we're taking with their cups. The cup is already labeled and the top has already got the price tag on it with a dot if it's a male or female if needed. And they're matched up right away. So it's just one, two, three, go in and pack. So I can take the deli cup, put it right next to the container and just kind of swipe the gecko right in. Top and down. be done. Boom, 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 boom. No. Um, Cassandra <laughs> mentioned that she would forget everything if it weren't written down. I have I, a spreadsheet we used right to, here. We used to have, and you you don't really reference that spreadsheet that much, but we used to in the early, for a year or two, you know, check mark, check mark. We have to, now it's boxes, you know, have a box, put everything in the box. Bring the box. It's done. It's done. So then on That's Saturday morning when we get up, then we go down and we um, pack up the animals. And normally by noon, we can have everything packed and ready to roll. And then if Molly's added more things in, which she 99% of the time will, what? then I go in and I make the next labels and I get those cups labeled. Then I have a spreadsheet ahead of time as well. I have multiple spreadsheets for the show. I have this one for all the crusted geckos. And yeah. like gargoyles and the leopards, and I have them listed with their number and how much they are. And then I have a column next to it. So if we give a deal or whatever we sell it for, we write it in so that it's funny to watch you guys. Cause like I one do of it. you will call to the other one. The one selling will call to the other one. Like I got number 133 for $27 or whatever. I don't, nothing yep. on Wally's table is $27. I'll tell yeah. you that now. So <laughs> Yes, that's good. That's fine. That's it's how I total out. That's how I know for yeah. sure. And then also having that sheet, I have it for my hard goods, I have it for my isopods, and I have it for the live animals. The live yeah. animals and the isopods, I can walk through at any point in time during a show and look at the table and go, okay, I see four gargoyles. We own, we didn't sell any of them yet. Or we have four gargoyles on the table. We sold one and I've got it marked. So I can kind of keep an idea of what's on our table to know at all times if anything has gone missing, which does not go missing at the shows at all. We don't have that and issue. We should talk about that yeah, maybe will. later, maybe yeah. later about we'll some yeah, yeah. of the measures that we take. We're not to perfect, protect but it. But anyways. um, so that's all done pre-show. And then Saturday night. By Saturday night, I have all the boxes except for the animals in the car ready to go. So Sunday morning, it's Wally getting up, cleaning out the animals, you know, cleaning, putting clean paper and getting something quick to grab to eat in the road. And we're out the door and we just take the animals out outside and go. And that's it then. I have a that's question for Ashley. Ashley is doing a lot of shows too. And her table looks so cool, mm -hmm. so nice. She does, she does beautiful... Um, Little figurines. Figurines. Thank you. Figurines. I, Ashley, let me know your process for the stuff that you're bringing to a show on a Sunday. Do you have a box that you have everything ready for like a day or two or three or more for that show? Or are you putting stuff in the Saturday and, and you know, the morning of the show? Real quick. Hi, Scott. The stress level is a lot less if you're organized yes. and you've got it because yes. we used to pack Sunday mornings for animals. We'd yeah. have to get up at 4.30 and 5 o'clock in the morning to pack. And then there was a time slot that you had to walk out of the house by. And if we were running behind because it was taking longer to pack, it just got it got more stressful. It wasn't worth it. That would have been my, that would have been my first and last show. I'd have got home from that show and just sold everything on eBay for rock bottom and just got out of the house. Like, forget it. I'm just going to keep <laughs> it's animals. It's hard. It's over. It's over. Not walk. much stress. The more good. organized you are for it, the better off you are. And you can't panic if you forget something. You can't. I mean, if you forget yeah. something, you forgot it. You got to move on. Um, there's key things that you have to have, but you just don't. Um, but I do have a checklist in my head, and I have a checklist on paper. Um, some of the stuff that we never, you've got to always make sure you've got cash with you. If you're taking yeah. cash, we do cash in charge. Um, if you're taking cash, you got to make sure you have small bills. Don't walk in there with $20 bills because the first customer is going to walk up to you is going to hand you a 10 and you're going to need change of some sort. So always have plenty of change. And we have learned through, um, scaled up at our, um, sites. They have told us that 
the time machines there that people were going to to use, they are now putting bigger bills in because it was emptying too quick. So you can't depend. Oh. So you're going to get somebody that's going to come up to your table potentially with a $50 bill on a pretty regular basis that you better be able to make change for. So what, what card uh, technology to use? What technology to use for cards? Like we service? use square. I use square. Okay. And I use yeah. it on my phone and um, 90% of the time I end up doing a manual entry because it depends on the internet in the building. Sometimes yeah. it takes longer with the tap. So I just key in and people don't mind handing me the card, yeah. letting me key it in. I always show it to them, but we use square. I don't take Venmo. I don't do PayPal at the shows. We were, uh, the last show I went to see you guys, their internet went down or something because yes. they couldn't process payments yep. as I was walking in. So they were like, well, do you have cash? No. Not so right. they're like, uh, enjoy the show. And <laughs> just like wave me in. I'm out of here. Yep. No. So when I turned their internet back. back on, I went over and turned their router back on. I forgot my, my arm band, but it worked really well. Get we phone. don't have the time machine. The shows normally have a time machine in the lobby. Any one of the facilities that we're in, they will have a time machine there. But they have been told a time by machine. People. Well, a um, not a time an ATM. ATM. Yeah. I'm sorry. ATM. They used to call them time okay. machines. T Y M E S. ATM. Oh, sorry. sorry. I wish I had a time machine. I could use one. H G O. I was yeah. like, uh, it must be a Wisconsin thing. I don't know what she's saying, but I'll let it go. Right, it. It's right next to the bubbler. <laughs> Shush. And the and the pop. here's the discussion we had about the pop here's discussion I had about time machines the other day, or time travel. So, uh, when I was younger, I always wanted to go back into my like, if I could go back into my high school body with like what I know now, my brain, my current brain, do some things over. What would I do over? And uh, uh, we come to terms with the fact that that's gross. So uh, let's say I'm almost 50 now. If I went and put my brain into my 16 or 17 year old body, um, that part would be awesome because my knees would work still and my back wouldn't hurt because I picked up a pencil. Um, but like, who would you date? Like you couldn't date high schoolers because they're so boring. Like you would have nothing to talk about. You'd be an old man in this young body and you couldn't date old women, older women because like, you're a high schooler. <laughs> so you'd be stuck in this weird purgatory. It would just be weird. It would just be weird. It wouldn't be worth it. So I that's just, a thing you're thinking about. Like, oh, all the stuff I would get done. Just forget it. Like you did your deal. Don't don't worry about it. Done. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I would do so a lot of things the same it? way that I did oh, back then. Okay. Like don't make them all sick that. too. Can you go up? Yeah. Oh, I can't. Ashley Josh has to go up. Oh, okay. Ashley commented. Yeah. She said that she yeah. um she makes her pieces, her pieces, she takes pictures and then packs them all up. Sometimes I get lost, last minute pieces done the day before. All right. That's that works. Who is Ashley? What is Ashley? Ashley, what do you do? She does those Ms. little Schultz. really cool figurines. Oh, you know what? You have yeah. one. Yeah, you've got <laughs> one in your office. Oh, oh. All the way over. These are from, is this from, one? I don't know. I know. I'm going to bring this. You're going to pull. Everything down. shelf down. Bear with me for just a second. Go I left. Literally, yeah, yeah. All the way. No, I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay, here we go. Don't break it. I, I'm trying not to. So let me get the... Yeah, dust them off. <laughs> okay. Take a look at this, folks. She makes these beautiful It will never figurines. focus because it's focusing on you, Nanette. Oh, it's the... Uh, of course here it is. Go. Look at oh. that. Look at that. This you is from Atkinson. She makes these. She she does all kinds of things. She does some dragons, correct? She's done Pokemon figures. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. There these you are go. Polymer clay. Yes. Ashley, yes. go ahead. They're they're um nice to meet you all. I make oh, polymer heck? clay sculptures. Yes. They're awesome. Wow. They're beautiful. So everybody knows what a cave gecko is, right? Yeah. Okay. How do you get it to hold still like that? <laughs> That's amazing. It's frozen in time with my time machine. Ashley, if you have a website, put it up on uh, screen and I'll, I'll put it in the description. She does Those beautiful work. Those are dope. Bravo. What, what is this? Anybody know? Uh, let me think. How Yellow about? pandas. That's exactly it. Yellow panda. It's, it's the bumblebee zebra. 
<laughs> shut up. Just shut up. Those were rubber duckies. I know you're you were joking, so yeah, they were rubber, rubber duckies. Ah, oh, there you go. There it's a whole family. It's a whole little family. Oh, that poor yes. just right. wonderful, beautiful, wonderful work. work. Wonderful, beautiful wonderful work. work. <clears throat> what is it? Here's my art page. She's a slow typer. She's a slow typer, fast sculptor, apparently. So, yeah. and she paints them. The paint jobs are what's got me. Oh, like, yes, that's gorgeous. That's great. I paint miniatures, and uh, those are some skills right there. So, uh, where were we? What were we talking about? Frank, um, find your charger. Um, what we were taking to the show and being organized at a table. Uh, Frank, just throw your phone in the microwave for a couple minutes. It'll pop right to full. Yeah. Go, I saw a TikTok on it. TikTok can't lie, right? Oh, you can't put a link in unless you're the moderator? Yeah. Uh, well... Cassandra, yeah, a right. Picta, a, a picta, that would be awesome. picta. Yeah, that would be great. So let's talk about. We gotta about... figure out how to get that link. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's so we talk about... about. Go. You go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't know where I was. I was going to ask you about like what type of table size do you pick, but you would yep. know based on yep. what you have to sell, right? You That's would exactly. Kind of... Well, exactly no, what I was going to, to bring up. Yeah. The table size is kind of tough. You have to kind of, the best thing that you can do is go and research before you start doing your very first show. Find out, you know, kind of an idea. And I, I tell you what, the best thing that you can ever do is do the research, go into a show, find tables that, that kind of sell stuff like yours or that you really like, and take pictures. Take pictures. Hey, do you mind? I love your table. Can I take a picture of your table? Bring it home and say, I like how he or she has this set up. I like how this is arranged. And then try to do the same thing yourself. Um, how big of a table you should have, you've got to do the research. You've got to figure that out yourself. Now, we started years and years ago with an eight-foot table. Then we graduated to a two-foot quite a while ago. And then a, a year two foot. or a, a two-eight-foot two table. Yeah, two, yeah, we went all the graduated way down to Graduated from foot. an eight to a two-foot. Hold on. Let me get my calculator. Let's get in the time machine and retract oh, that statement. And, I thought uh, I had problems with sure, yep, 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 yep. Two eight-foot tables. Um, and then last year we went over to three eight-foot tables. So you just kind of have to know, you know what you're selling and how it feels. You don't want everything just crammed in there because then, it, then people aren't going to take the time to look because it's like walking into a rummage sale and seeing just, you know, a thousand ball python, shirts. ball python, ball python. <laughs> right, right. So, but you don't want one thing on your table. You have to get that. And a lot of times, what we'll do is we're going to do, especially the two day shows, we'll bring, let's say, three boxes of crested geckos. One box will go on the table and we'll hold two back until a lot of those crested geckos have sold. Then we'll bring out some more. Don't overload your tables, but don't make them feel like a, a wasteland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because well, and then at the point you you pay for those tables, that space, so you're wasting space at the same time. Like you're spending too much on the on the space that you have. Exactly. So that becomes part of it too. Because what are the tables like? Fifty bucks usually at the. Oh, it depends, depends on the depends. show. Tinley is, is a lot. Tinley is a lot. Um, yeah. Schomburg's higher. I would say they're between fifty and a hundred dollars, depending on the show. Yeah. Per table. Okay. Okay. And some shows you pay electric, so you need to make sure you ask about that because there are some shows that they make them pay an additional fee for electric, so we're paying for our electric then also. So then you have to bring the exercise bike and keep Wally on the exercise bike, run the chargers? Yep. yep. And the done. show opened and... It's done. We're done. <laughs> the lights are all out. <laughs> Thank you for coming, everyone. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks for that, guys. Enjoy the drive home. So let's talk about security because I want to know about security because I've been hearing a lot. I've been seeing a lot of posts lately about people that got stuff stolen off their table. Yeah, um, it's so wonderful. from wherever I have been seeing a lot of posts in different groups. So um, it, it's hard. Of, yeah, it's hard because you unless you're thinking about it, you're not thinking about it. And I think that that's kind of obvious, but it's not. We did many, many, many shows without even, you know, the thought of somebody stealing stuff 
crossed my mind until it happened like right in front of me one day. Um, what did I change after that? Not much, not much. So you can take it to any extreme that you want to. A good friend of ours, uh, Andrew Gilpin, LAC Herps, and Sarah, they have cameras. They have cameras up. And oh, wow. they had a lychee stolen, and they could go back to the tape. The, the thief was actually still on premise, so they were able to stop him and get their animal back. Uh, we don't have cameras. Uh, a couple, three, four months ago, I thought long and hard about that. But... It takes a lot of time to set up. It, you know, nowadays it doesn't cost that much, and and the theft of one animal could be way over. You know, the cost of setting something like that up. But it's just yeah. it takes a lot of time. And I don't want a bunch of signs. It's me. This is me. I don't want a bunch of signs saying, "Hey, premises guarded by guard dogs." And you know, I, I want people yeah. to feel welcome and and to pick stuff up and not feel like, "Oh, who's watching me?" If I even you know pick an animal up. Um, but, but having said that, there's a lot of things that you can do to uh, try to alleviate that that issue as much as possible. So we generally have our tables in a line. In a line, sometimes we have them um, L done, kind of like an L, kind of an L. There's a couple yeah. of shows that they give us a corner. So we always try to, you know, if you know if Nanette has to go to the washroom, she'll let me know. And purposely, I'll take two steps back so I can watch both sides of the table without, you know, kind of doing the, the eagle eye thing. I'll take two steps back so I can keep an eye on this area and also this area as well. Problem comes yeah. in if somebody comes by. You know, if somebody wanted to, they, they're going to do whatever they want because the last questions and, and the way I am, I'll focus 100% on that person to give them the answers that they're looking for. So again, you know, Nanette will watch to see when I'm busy. Uh, I'll, most of our big product is in, with the animals. So Nanette does a really, really good job of, of not standing at the table like this, you know, working with customers. She'll stand like this to work with customers so that she can easily see what I'm doing and, and the customers that maybe are looking at animals that I'm not really watching yeah. that minute. So we try to keep eyes on the table, you know, as much as we possibly can. But again, you get busy and and it wouldn't take anything. You just try to alleviate that as much as possible. Our bigger animals will put on little risers with um, cloth to kind of keep them closer to us. And we get keep the more the, expensive the stuff. More expensive stuff. <clears throat> um, the more uh, the weirdo geckos, some of the, the things that I um, am breeding that take longer to breed and are a little bit rarer. I'll keep in a certain area so I know if somebody picks one of those animals up, I can address the person uh, as quick as I possibly can. Can I help you with that? Did you have any questions? Let them know that I'm I'm right there to help them, obviously, but yeah. also that I'm, I'm right here, too. Strategically placing things on the table is the thing. I mean, yes. you have to. Even with isopods, I put the more expensive oh. ones toward the closer to me and sure. the less expensive toward the front. And I'm also careful not to put things, if we can help it, right to the edge of the table where somebody can just grab and walk and you don't know what's happening. Um, yeah, yeah. But like Wally said, we just kind of keep eyes on the table. That's what's one really plus to having Crystal there a lot of times because when she's standing there, she's always up front wanting to hold an animal. So she'll sit and chit chat with people and she's watching as well. Uh, this last show got really, really busy a couple of times. And we just said, Crystal, we just need you to kind of look around, keep an eye on animals on the table, help us out a little bit because it's getting really busy. And we just got a lot of people by the table. And she just like stood there and talked to people with the animal. But it was enough of a distraction for them to talk to them that we didn't have to worry about anything else going on at that time. Um, I can see Crystal like she... She has zero chill, and when she's on task, like she would just be like, "Hey, what are you doing over there? Like, what? Yeah. Hey, you can yeah. put that back, you know? Like, yep. Yep. <laughs> no, you can't touch that. You yeah. look with your eyes, not with your hands. Yeah. Like, <laughs> exactly. the rest. Yep. So this Citizens is the rest. The rest. <laughs> yeah, she'd be on it. Um, Angie has a question: Have we had anything stolen from the table? Yes, I can see her pulling a, a Glock out. Down, put it down. No, she would just walk over and smack them on the arm and they'd drop it. So uh, it's a water gun. In a water yeah, it's gun. A water gun. It's a water gun. 
no, here's here's the spray bottle. Um, Angie, yes, we did. Um, last last year we had it happen at a show, and I was really upset about it because I felt like I had fallen down on it, and it was an isopod. And what had happened was the person purchased a certain amount, like three or four containers, stacked them up, and I checked them off on my sheet and put them back down. Well, there's a little bit of a story even before that. So they're looking at the animals, so they know what the, what's on the table. We had animals from, you know, five dollar dwarf whites or whatever, ten dollar dwarf whites, to a hundred dollar isopods. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at the table, and they got Nanette's attention and said, "How much are the the dwarf whites?" Oh, they're oh, right. $10. Oh, okay. And did you want some? I'll keep looking. So Nanette's helping somebody else, and then she comes back, and the person, now you can finish. They had a whole stack of stuff. So I went through the stack. And, and they said, these are dwarf whites. Right. I bought yep. four dwarf whites. I got four dwarf whites, and they handed it to me, and I picked it up, and I looked at it, and I was like, okay, fine, four dwarf whites. So I handed it back to her, and when I handed it back to her, which is now why I use bags, which I'll get to, but I had handed her the four back. She sat it down on top of the most expensive isopods, oh. which was the $100 ones that she was looking at. Originally, she put it down on top of, and then when she walked away, she picked them up and she went. Well, I had handed it to her, assuming that she just picked up those four and left. Oh. And about half an hour later, I realized that that, Bye, Frank. that was gone. Bye, Frank. That it was gone, and I was like, "Molly, I think we lost isopods today." And then I realized what had happened. So now we have plastic bags, and as I check things off, everything goes into a plastic bag now, and I hand them the bag, and so I can keep a better check on things that way. There are some shows also that, um, like Sewerfest, that give you green dots when you come in in your envelope as a okay. vendor. And they ask you to put that on your animals and they check at the door to see if everything has been dotted. I now tape one of our thank you Supreme Gecko cards on the top of every animal that gets sold. And I mark paid on their SG so that if they get stopped by anybody, they know. And if they come back to our table to look at more animals, I know, okay, you've already purchased that animal. And okay. those cards are not my business cards. Those are ones that say thank you for Supreme Gecko. So nobody can pick up a business card, mark it themselves, and walk away. I have those cards underneath the table, underneath my section. Wow. So that's, that's how we stopped it. But that's the only time we've ever had anything taken off the table that we're, we've ever caught. I mean, we've never missed anything else. And when we come home, we check off things that are going back in. So I know as I'm going through what I has said I had sold is sold yeah. and yeah. what I'm putting away is here. So then we know that we haven't missed things. And I take that sheet. So, so we were, you know, Cassandra was asked or mentioning before that she wouldn't go anywhere without her sheet. Well, we don't really have a sheet for the, before the show, other than a list of the animals and I suppose we're, we're bringing to the show. I use that sheet then to put it into, put into the uh, spreadsheet. So then I don't do it every show. I don't do it every other show, but about once every six months or so, I'll go through that and see if there's any trends. I, this sounds so geeky, but to see if there's any trends. Oh my gosh, dwarf whites are going through the roof. We need to start bringing more dwarf whites. I need to start working on more bins for dwarf whites to sell at shows. Things like that. Can you well, just I don't think that... your bins? What's you that? System for like, you don't have a system for picking dwarf whites out of the rest of your bins? <laughs> no, yeah. I should. I, I, somebody should make a dwarf white magnet. Just kind of go over your bin and it just sucks out all the dwarf whites up. That'd be cool. Moon, that I don't think that we're nice. afraid of people stealing stuff. I we don't we don't walk in <clears throat> panic that we're gonna lose certain things. And I think it's because the way that we place stuff on the table, they would have to really like reach across to get the stuff that's really valuable, I would think. But Moon, I do just the absolute opposite. I want people, like I said earlier, I want I'm people friendly. to feel um, that they can pick stuff up. And, and uh, Wally, I have a question about this remote. Wally, I have a question about this gecko. Can you? I want people to handle. I want people to hold. I want people to feel comfortable doing that so we can talk. We can sit down and we can talk about this animal and, and yeah. the care. And 
I don't want to feel like, you know, a lot of people, a lot of vendors have chosen. If th this makes them feel comfortable, that's cool, but it, it doesn't work for me. They'll have, you know, the, the deli cups in a wooden uh, display case and then a plastic sheet over it so nobody can pick anything up. Uh, LLL Reptiles has the mesh um, mm -hmm. uh, over the, netting. Yeah, over that yeah. Boy, that, that for me as a customer, I'm walking past that. I'm not even looking. I, I don't, you know, it it's doesn't not friendly. appeal to me. It's not yeah. friendly. I, literally, I want people picking things up and asking me about those animals. That way I can engage and share passion and I can get them excited, as excited as I am about this. It's such a mixed bag because I get it. They have a thousand items on their table. Like there's, a, it might be LLL, but it is. there's one at NARBC. They have a huge section of tables yeah. and there's like 20 guys there, yep. but they've got a thousand different animals and this crazy setup for mesh. It reminds me of the old, um, like World War II movies with the camo netting. Mm -hmm. Yep. It reminds me of that. Yeah. So it's, it's distracting. It's weird. I'm always like, is that really necessary? Like seriously? And probably yeah. it kind of is, but probably is for them. Wild. It's just wild. And then you know. see other big um, uh, vendors like uh, exotic empire, uh, Josh over there. He has nothing. He just has his staff over there watching people, but he yeah. does that thing where he's like, <laughs> You can see, yes, yes, you can see him doing that too. But yeah, I, oh yeah. As, as a customer and a vendor, I can certainly appreciate that. And I know exactly, you can see his eyes kind of, you know, engaged. And then the real quick little flip over to see what's going on. He does yeah. a good job of that. Or he'll do a thing I've seen him do where he's like, oh, you have a question? Yeah, this guy will handle it for you. And then he's off like mm -hmm. checking everybody out. It's so fun. It's so fun to watch the different reactions from people. Um, you, or they ben, have them under the lock and key, like there's the case, and they're in there with the locked section. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of ways to, to keep it secure, but it's yeah. people get things stolen and yep. some really valuable animals that like losing a lychee that's like what $1,200 usually. Yep. Yeah, yep. That's bad. so that's not good. That's not good. And you then, also how do you mentioned, um, something, Josh, just now when you were talking? You said something about having their employees behind or their extra people. That's something that when you do set up and you want to go to a show, you need to yeah. ask the the coordinators, is there an extra fee to have an extra body behind your table? Is there a limit to how many people can okay. be behind your table? Because like at ARBC, your initial table gives you one person. Then you have to buy a second badge at like $40 or whatever it is to have that second person at your table. So you have to check so that. I can't, you can't just I can't walk get in and, and just say that I'm with Ryan Marshall at Marshall Arachnids no. and just be no. like, man, because no. I've done that at shows that I went to visit people. <laughs> I've been like, Hey, I work for uh who was it? It was at Scott Smith's expo. It was Scott. Um, uh, ISO site, isopod psycho. No, it's not ISO psycho. Uh, I spot freak. I spot freak okay. Scott. Okay. Uh, he's not in business anymore for ice pods anyway, but I, I got to the door and I was like, Hey, I kind of went in front of people and I was like, I'm trying to get these meds. Like I brought migraine medicine for my boss. Scott is in here. Can I just run it into him? And they were like, uh, what tables they had? It's like, I don't, I don't know. I'm not even supposed to be here. So they were like, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Go ahead. He's it was scummy. It was, but it was, you know, I don't feel bad. Scott Smith's done a lot of crazy things. Those expos have. Had a lot of crazy things come through that door. I didn't feel that bad. Like we said That's before, I did that show for a long time. A lot of crazy things mm -hmm. going through the doors. Well, that was where it was like Wild West back in the day. Like you could get a pit bull, a raccoon, um, yeah, yeah, chicken. Walked out of there with alligators, chickens, mm -hmm. whatever birds, really. Goats. Yeah, it was like a, it was like one of those crazy markets where you're going to get SARS or something breed in there. It was crazy. King, could you? I saw King Kaju get sold there. Um, they had those tiny possums. I don't remember. You guys remember the short tail, short tail possum? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 There was. I mean, the the pop belly pigs, the little mini pigs. Don't don't buy those guys. Don't buy those. I saw a guy with the table of koalas there once. It was crazy. Can you? <laughs> Nothing has changed except we show up. <laughs> koalas. I just I let that go right over. I wouldn't doubt it. There's probably somebody there who's like, I know a guy. 
Oh, <laughs> see my koalas? koala. I can get you koala. Can you bring up Moon's point? This is a really, really yeah. good point. And this is hard for me. So we let people handle our geckos occasionally. You know, we're, we're very conscientious of who handles them. Small kids, obviously, we're, we try to shy away from that. And I always handle the animals first. I handle, crest, especially crested geckos. Not the small geckos because they're, they're too fragile. But we'll bring out a crested gecko. I'll walk it hand to hand, jump, jump, jump. And then I'll ask the person to hold your hands like this. Don't squeeze. Don't. And I'm right here. And I'll if it gets away, I'll, I'm right here. Hold it over the table. So we give the the you know little speech beforehand. Do, do am I concerned with that animal getting something from somebody's table? I've worried and worried and worried about that. I've had animals for years and years and years coming to these shows without having any issues. However, having said that, I'm always leery and I'm always concerned. I don't know how to handle this. And if anybody has a suggestion, they can help me out. I have the issue where. Somebody will come to the table and they have snakes and they have, you know, substrate. And I know there's bugs in there and everything. They'll just set everything down on the table and start going through cups and holding the cups. I don't care about them holding the cups, but with everything on the table, I worry about that. Am I, yeah. do I worry too much about that? How can I handle that with a customer? Do I say, hey, you know, pick up your stuff, don't don't set it on the table? I feel like that's a little bit too forward. I don't know. I'll get a super I'll soaker with hand sanitizer in it and squirt like, the person. Shh. No, squirt the yeah, person? yeah, right on their squirt shirt. The person off, off, yeah, back, back, right in the face. <laughs> what made you think that was an okay idea? Um, I love we the do shows have for the hand people. sanitizer on our tables. You do. We yeah, do. Can, oh, yeah. We I have hand sanitizers that. on our tables. And when Crystal comes, Crystal will walk away from the table, and her favorite thing in the world is to find there's two people that she knows at a couple of shows, and she will hold snakes constantly. Okay. And she will walk over and show me the snake, and I'll shoo her away, and then she goes away. But when she comes back, we always tell her, please use hand sanitizer, especially when you're holding all kinds of animals. We, we need to do that. And most people will use hand sanitizer before they even touch an animal at the table, I've noticed recently. And I think it's just a safety thing for them. They feel safer. Sure, sure. Well, and then safer and talking about uh, diseases. How did it go when you had, uh, <clears throat> what was the show uh, culture like during COVID? Like, what was that? Was that? There was no show. Shut down. They shut us down. Yeah. Yeah. We when we went back, the yeah. first show that we went back to after COVID, yeah. um, people were we we didn't let anybody touch anything on the tables. We pretty much oh, and like I, a year. And everybody was like that. It was like all vendors were like, yeah. We're not touching, we're not holding animals. Um, most people didn't touch anything. We had multiple bottles of hand sanitizer out in front, and you would see people come by and use it often. Um, if we took cash in at the beginning, we were hand sanitizing God. immediately because we didn't know more at that time. Um, yeah. anything that was touched, anytime somebody handed us something or we, they touched something, we were cleaning up right away just for the safety of it ourselves. And yeah. it was just, you didn't know, you know, what to do. Um, it was scary we, times. So, yeah, we yeah. still have people that come in in masks at the shows now just for the safety of it, for them. We still have them in the bank. They come in with a mask on their chin like this. Like, it's not even on their face. It's oh. just here. I don't know why. Like, it's holding their chin on. Um, or they'll have it in the car, full mask and alone in the car. Like, I don't I don't understand. Like, I, I get it. The mask, you want to be safe, but then wear the mask. Like, the exactly. guy I brings it in over his just nose. Like, just his I nose. I couldn't breathe through my mask, so I cut holes for my two nostrils and my mouth. That hurt a lot. Yeah. We had a guy at the bank. We had an old guy at the bank who would come in. It was inside a jewel, and he cut a hole in the mask for his cigar. Yeah, it wouldn't be lit. He'd just be walking around with a cigar. And I, I gotta say, I love that old man. I hated wow. people that were stupid about the masks, but bravo to that guy. That that was that's an ace move right there. Can you bring up Ashley's comment? And I'm going to touch on that about etiquette at shows. Um. I had people who stop and talk in front of my table, blocking it. It's uh, always nice to say, please uh, be careful. So um, etiquette, it shows. Whenever we're selling something, 
Crested geckos, leopard geckos. If I don't have something that somebody's looking for, do you have any larger leopard geckos? These are all young. I will immediately point them to, hey, go over and see Gary or this person. Do you have any adult gargoyles? Oh, gosh, I don't, but let, come with me. Let's go over to walk, walk with me over here. Just follow me over to Ariel's table. I want to, so I try to be as open and for, uh, forward with people as I possibly can. I think everybody at a show like that is that way. Yeah. Etiquette at shows. Um, and and I'm, I'm going to try to watch what I say here. But this. I had a person uh, stop at our table um, a couple of shows ago and talking, talking, talk, 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 talking, talking about, and they had two or three crusted geckos. Look what I had. Look what I found. And I don't, you know, it's hard because you want to stop and talk to friends and see what they have and everything, but there are customers. So what I'll do is I'll stop, and this is kind of a tip here, talk to them. Talk to them because they're friends, and you want them feeling comfortable. After a while, you have to, because you're there to sell animals, you have to say, thanks for showing me those. I, I have to get back. I, and I'll say something funny like, that's going to kill me if she catches me talking here the whole time. So I had somebody do it's that. It's funny. It's real. <laughs> I had somebody do that, and I did the, hey, I've got some customers here. Do you mind if I catch up with you later? No, no problem. And about 15, 20 minutes later, the person has talked to some customers in front, and they've gone off somewhere else. Good friend at the table to my left kind of leaned over and said, Wally, I, how well do you know that person? I had pretty good friends, not, not great friends, but, you know, I see them every show or so. He said, well... Um, I hate to do this, but they told the customers that were looking at your animals and then had backed off and when you were work, uh, talking to somebody else. They said that they had the geckos that they had in their hand and they would sell them for less than what I had on my table. I uh, just wanted to let you know. So, you know, if you're at a show, you know, the vendors are there to, to show off their animals the vendors are yeah. there to make money. You know, that's what they're there to do and to make connections and network and everything. My gosh, if you're standing in front of my table and you tell a, one of my potential customers, I don't care if you do it, you know, somewhere else, but in front of my table and you're telling a customer that you have animals just like mine and you'll sell them for half the cost, that's blatant, you know, non-ethical kind of behavior. And, and that's hard. That's I'm glad I wasn't at that show and didn't hear that story because I would have went right after that guy. <laughs> I, I went had, right after that guy. Yeah, I had the um, opportunity to talk to them afterwards, and it it was, wasn't um, good. it wasn't good, but it was you know we we kind of cut ties and we just moved on. So yeah, it, it's just you you know you I think people have to realize if you're a vendor, don't cut down another vendor because customers they'll get the sense that that's how you operate. Refer to other vendors. You know, if 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 yeah. you're, somebody's getting something from your table, great. If they're not, point them to other vendors because 99% of the vendors at these shows are just great, great people. I um when I went to the last uh, Tinley show, Ryan from Marshall Arachnids, I always stopped there and talked to him for like an hour, and <laughs> he was telling me the guys. I was like, your booth is really tiny this year, and I guess. So you have your eight foot table, right? So um, they had like a table and a half of space or something. He told me the dimensions, but the table on the side of him, he has these big racks that are on wheels. Yes. He pushed the rack over like a foot into his space. So they had that extra foot. And I was like, do you want me to do something? I was, <laughs> I'll go flip their table right now. Like I'll fall on it. Like, do some three stooges maneuver and just take that table out. I don't care. And he was like, nah, we talked to them. We talked or we talked to the, the promoters or whatever. They're supposed to do something, but that was yesterday. And I was like, seriously, I will flip that table. Um, I, I, I can see that. you pulling, I can see you pulling a Chris Farley on them. Just kind of walking over. And just, <laughs> <laughs> or like a, um, Oh my God. What's his name? Jim Belushi. Evolution. Just walk over and flip the table like, oh, sorry. Walk sorry. away. Sorry. Little or, animal house action. S sorry. That's just, I, I just feel like you pay good money. You pay, especially at NARBC, you pay a lot of money for your square footage. Mm -hmm. Like, do not 
take yeah. somebody's square footage. Like that's that shot's fired in my book. Yeah. That's bad news. Yep. Yep. So this year, if you're going to NARBC at Schomburg, even, and I find out you took space from one of my friends, I will <laughs> knock your shit over. All right, just be ready. So we, that, you know who to call. Badge. Let's cut, come up with a badge like table space patrol or something like that. <laughs> you the and regulators. I. Table the, space the, regulators. <laughs> the regulators. Table space regulators. <laughs> that's oh. a big badge. That's that's kind of a big badge. <laughs> and we'd misspell regulators. I feel like <laughs> that'd be bad news. Um, do not encroach another vendor's space. Yeah, it's beyond rude. It's you're taking money out of that pocket. Like you're taking their money. You're stealing from them. Um, it, 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 that's all it is. Bottom line. So, like, kind of like what this guy did to you. That's essentially theft. Um, how do you deal with speaking of more etiquette? How do you deal with people like me, who show up last minute and assume you don't want to take all the animals home? So, try to cut some wacky deal at the very end. I, I ignore you and I just pack everything up. The next told me that <laughs> over and over again. So I saw this at the last show. You did that, <laughs> Lynette, and she just literally went like this. She's packing. She went. <laughs> That's the last things that we always pack as well as at the, at the so show. <laughs> we. I don't have any problem no, with that at either. all. Whatever. No. So I look at it as. Um, I'll, I'm going to relate to work. When I was working, I had different groups that I would support. And every one of the groups wanted their projects done first and 100% focus on their projects. And I don't care what else yeah. you're working on, get my projects done. But that's their job. That's their job. My job is to make as much money as I possibly can on every single one of the geckos that I sell. The customer's job is to get the animals that they want for as low as they can. That's and if we can do a Rick or Chumley or whatever and work out yeah. a deal, cool, perfect. So I don't take any offense with somebody coming up to the table and saying, you've got $200 on that animal. Would you take $150? It, get, it starts the conversation. We can talk about it. I can explain why. Maybe I don't want to. Or maybe I can say, you know what? Good timing. You got me. Let's do $150. If somebody comes up and says, uh, okay, that I'll take these five animals and come to two thousand dollars, how would you take five hundred dollars for them? Well, you're taking a no. lot of kind of high priced animals here. I'm probably going to come back real quick with a you know, kind of a, a stopper kind of in the conversation. I can't do that. But yeah. otherwise, let's chat, let's talk. Except for Josh. Except for Josh. <laughs> He comes. I Wally just, just sends me the stuff for free anyway, Nanette. It doesn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I know what goes out of the house, Josh. I pack it. I can see Nanette now. She's like talking <laughs> to a customer. She looks up, and here comes Josh. And the hand right across the table. Right no. on the floor. <laughs> We're closed. Just sold out. We're done. We're done here today. Um, yeah, I'm the worst customer now. I don't buy anything. I just want to talk to you about your animals forever and or, or whatever. I just want to talk. So, yeah. Um, I was I had a stupid haggling story and I forgot all about it. I'll remember it when we're in the middle of another conversation. So, um, food, food and hydration. Do you pack your own? Do you send someone out? Because I've been to shows where they come back with like bags and bags of portillos. Now I'm hungry. Um, we do not eat at our table. We eat nothing other than I will always pack cashews or peanuts or something like that. Okay. Um, we don't eat at the table. Wally has always not liked that to happen at a table. Nothing okay. is worse than having a mouthful of food and having a customer come up and you have to either quickly swallow it or just look like a slob trying to eat it really quick. We had it. Tender chokes on bratwurst at Wisconsin yeah. Reptile Show. Yeah. <laughs> we um, actually dealt with that little situation in our last show with Crystal. She um, she went yeah. and got lunch, which is fine. And we've always told her she can. Yeah. But she pulled her chair right up to our table, <laughs> like at the, behind the table, <laughs> pulled a chair up, and she was sitting right there. And we're like, no. Um, customers don't want to see you doing that. We don't do it Go at back our in your table. box. 
Go back it's in the like show that. box and eat. <laughs> yeah, really. The one that you fit in in the car, right. that's where you're going to be, sweetie. No, um, she understood. Um, but we don't need it to shows. Um, it's just, it's easier not to. We do. Yeah. I always pack sodas and water for us because you granola never bar. know, or a granola bar, you never ever know if for some reason the vendor that the show yes. the show places always normally have food available. Yeah. But we have gone yeah. a couple times where um the food truck wasn't allowed to park where it had been, where it was close to the building. Oh uh, wow. in Janesville they had changed it around. The hotel did not any longer allow the food truck to park right outside the doors. They had to park on the opposite side of the parking lot, which was like getting there and getting a soda and coming back would have been like a 20 minute run because then you had to yeah. go all the way back around the long way. So I always pack something for us to drink. We have granola bars. Um, sometimes I have, um, like I said, nuts and stuff just to keep us going. And we just go with it from there. If Crystal's there, she goes and gets a lunch. Normally she'll eat it wherever, but this last time she just kind of really felt comfortable sitting right at the table, right up front. <laughs> Angie, yeah. I'll, I'll make the comment. Uh, Angie says, I was gonna comment on that too. Yeah, Go ahead. she says I, it doesn't bother me when I see vendors eating, and it, you know, to be all honest about this, it doesn't bother me at all either. It's just been in my mind since day one that we're there for one purpose, and that's to share the the passion about the animals. And if somebody sees, if somebody walks up to my table and they see me doing this, that tells them a couple of things. I'm not there to sell. And I'm not there to talk to them. And that's not the impression that I want to give. Um, the same same way with for me with food. And if I'm sitting, you know, behind the table in a chair and I'm eating food, I don't feel like I'm doing justice to the animals nor to the customer. But that's in my mind. If other you know, if other vendors want to do it, that's cool. It doesn't bother me at all either. Did you have somebody come up about a year and a half ago, two years ago, and say, you know, you guys are always standing. Why, do, why are you always standing? Same kind of principle. If I'm sitting down, I feel like I'm not doing what I should be doing at a show. And I I, I kind of try to instill that with Nanette and, and Crystal or anybody that helps us, too. When we're at the show, yeah. we're front and center. And when somebody has a question, they shouldn't be concerned about stopping us from eating or looking on our phone to ask that question. No, the only right. time I, we have a phone up is when we're doing the, um, the square. Square. Yeah. square. That's yeah. the only time I have my phone up. Um, we really, really focus on not having our phones out and looking. Because for me to walk by, and I've gone to many craft fairs, and I've gone to other places, and you go in, and they're sitting there on their phones, and they don't even know you're there. They don't recognize you, you know, that you're there. Yeah. And I just feel like, I'm being a bother by being there. Yeah. And to clarify, Angie, Angie oh. uh, you're absolutely I'm sorry, Josh, I'm jumping in here. Yeah, but yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Angie, you're absolutely right. I completely agree. For me, I'm there to sell and and to talk. I don't I usually don't eat a lunch or anything. I'll have a granola bar, maybe, but I am all for, you know, if Nanette says I'm hungry, I'm gonna take off for a little bit, go take off and eat somewhere. Just just don't be at our at the table eating your hot dog with customers coming up all the time go go somewhere go to a table a little table and sit down and eat um you know go go somewhere other than you know right behind our table that's all that i ask and i will say as a disclaimer like this is the supreme gecko way to do things it may not work for you but it is the right way it yep. is the right way so just um I don't like, I don't mind when people are eating as a vendor, um, but I don't like when that's like, they're straight up ignoring you or like annoyed, like be prepared to eat your cold pizza or your cold right. cheeseburger, whatever. I, you're there to make money. Um, I'm not going to come back when your lunch break is over. It's not a lunch break. You're not like clocked out. Um, you signed up for this. You did this. So I've passed on shows because people, uh, the guy next to you, there was the guy next to you that I wanted to talk to about his animals at the the one where Nanette shooed me away for the, trying to make a deal. Um, he was sitting down with the biggest burger. And I was just, literally, I was looking at his animals and I, I didn't want to buy anything. Obviously, I'm a cheap bastard that, I, that doesn't have any room or time for any more animals. But um, I wanted to ask him, like, where he got the burger. 
and he looked at me. He was like this. He was, let me take these off. So he's eating the burger. I'm here. And he goes, he goes back to his burger. <laughs> I was like, well, okay then. That was so okay. I looked at Wally. Wally was right there, and I'm like, this guy's yeah. hungry. Yes, I remember that. No. I think he actually he looked up at you, acknowledged you, and then turned his back away from yeah, you. Yeah, he kind of like turned away like, ass, I'm trying to eat here. Dude, um, come on. Can't you see? Hey, yeah. Amber, come on. Moon, you like, can I thought we were all friends. You can Angel, always kind of snake on the this? other side of the table, but not on our side where we're working. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Don't, can Angel, what is this snake? don't mistake the burrito for one of the geckos. You know, I'd hate to That's have you else. take a bite out of a gecko tail or something like that. that I'm bad. hungry again, too, Gary. Hey, Gary. Yeah. We guys need to hear about, about. We were talking about guys have for Easter? and cookies earlier, so I I was hungry right from the get go. <laughs> from the get go, I'll talk about food all day. What did you guys have for Easter? What was your uh, my sister your made? Um, my sister make, does Easter. She makes it here. She comes to our house and does it every year. Um, okay. She had um, ham and um, beef uh, sirloin tip roast because one of my nephews doesn't eat. Um, ham so she made a sirloin tip for him alone but everybody had it if we wanted it and then we had um potatoes and fruit and all kinds of goodies oh she she um roasted carrots and brussels sprouts and it was very sprouts. good oh i had brussels so many sprouts. brussels sprouts oh my gosh you I'm don't so even full. like them i had here's the deal i oh. hated them i hated them because my mom can't cook and her family um they learned how to cook. They boil everything. They boil. They boiled oh. pork chops and served boiled pork chops. And I—that's why I cook now—is because I barely made it through my childhood. Um, but Brussels sprouts, they would boil them to oblivion, so it was just oh. a bowl of farts. He roasts them. Yeah, it was just a bowl of wet farts. And mm, now I know you can cook them without pudding. making them farts, and so much better than farts. So much better. <laughs> Um, do you roast them? You roast them, right, with the charred she leaves? Roasted them. I mean, yep, she roasted them She's yep, oh, with garlic and butter on them. And she, yeah. carrot, she had carrots the same way this time. They were very good. Yeah, they Toss it all good. in a little, like take a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar and just toss it all at the end. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I promise you. Uh -huh. um, you need guacamole for your burrito. Josh, that's a garter snake from what, Wisconsin, I think. Or at Wisconsin that I took a picture of. I found my first garter snake uh, three days ago in my yard. Very cool. Yeah, Very yeah cool. it was right on the. I walked out and it was right across the walk, like looking at me, like where are you going? Um, we have them all over my neighborhood. They're they're everywhere. So, uh, oh, no. my family from New England. Uh, we are. My mom did uh, one of those genetic tests, the DNA tests, and found out that we are like ten more things than we thought we were. So it boils down to, boils down to nice. Well, unintended. <laughs> um, if you take every kind of like glow in the dark white person on the planet every nation every nation that's like glow in the dark white different. and you put them in a room till they all make one baby they distill down to like one baby that's me that's i'm that guy so uh yeah it's every kind of white person ever means a lot so, yeah yeah it's bad as long as my dance moves at least so Yes. So it becomes kind of like a, a pot of boiled broccoli. It's all, you know, like Brussels sprouts. Yes. Brussels sprouts, like pudding. Brussels sprouts pudding. Not like fart pudding. All right. All right. That's fair. <laughs> Just to see Nanette put her head down and hear her head shake. Yeah, that was worth it for me. <laughs> ah. <clears throat> Grandmother from Maine, and she boiled a lot of food. I think boiling the food is like a Depression era thing. I think it's a depression era thing. A lot of food that you got was like already partially rotted or close to it. And so you had to cook the living hell out of it to get it to be not deadly. Um, Angie, are so you still my... hungry? <laughs> yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go make a bowl of farts, Angie. You want <laughs> Polish, German, French, Italian, and but Word I can't say online. I don't know. I want to know what that word is, Abby. But well, I don't know. I don't know. We say a lot of things on here. So, or was that Cassandra? That was Cassandra. Sorry, I skipped. She wasn't a good cook. My mom says that is. Yeah. So this Easter, my family um, made a lot of good food, but we do the mistake where we make every person makes enough to feed every person. Ooh. So when most of it doesn't go eaten, 
not everybody at the table, they don't realize not everybody at our gatherings eats like me. I'll eat two portions of everybody's food. I'll do that throughout the night. It'll be cold, and I'm going back to try those beans. Off of their so plates? Just, off, you said everybody's food off their plates? If it comes to that. If, it comes, <laughs> if they have... If they have my aunt's uh, have chocolate have dessert, you better keep it away from me. If you have the aunt's talk chocolate lush, Aunt Lisa's chocolate lush, I'll come for you. That's mine. Um, but my sister made vegan meatloaf out of bulgur, bulgur. It's bulgur wheat. Um, now mm -hmm. I'm as a chef, as a previously known chef, I am against vegan food a little bit. I'm against the vegan mentality. <clears throat> but anyway, this meatloaf had great texture. Um, it felt like meatloaf. It kind of tasted like meatloaf. Uh, so she asked me <laughs> what I thought. Kind of. And I said, I think I'm buying you a spice rack for Christmas. And she's like, what do you mean? I said, I had <laughs> at least add some salt for Christ's sake. Like something. Try s salt and pepper. That's all I asked. Like there was nothing in this thing. It was it was beyond. I couldn't understand. I don't understand it. Um, I also don't understand like vegans' obsession with meat. They want every vegetable to be meat. Like I want a vegan hamburger. I want a vegan hot dog. I want a vegan uh, meatloaf. Like if vegetables are so great, just eat vegetables. If they're that good, I mean, come on, man. Rhymes with ditch. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, when you I don't know about that case. Go back to Jedi's uh, question there. That's a really, really good question. Jedi, we were way off topic. Where did, how dare you bring us back? <laughs> yeah. uh, if you're prepping pods to vend at a store, uh, he's making some deals. I saw this the other day. They might sit there for a couple of weeks. How would you prep those? Uh, I would put, well, how do they do it? I would put one styrofoam peanut, one packing peanut, and uh, what else? What is the other thing they did? One water bead. That seems to be the thing now. Um, there's a there's a vendor that vends to Petco, and you can buy them in a deli. Uh, you can buy 12 dead pods in a deli with a packing peanut. It's like made out of wheat gluten or something. Yeah. And it's made out of something that's edible and a dried up water bead. You can buy that for like $12. Um, they have three different kinds of dead ice pod that you can buy. It's pretty great. Uh, yeah, how dare you, Jedi? You've been here. You're a moderator. You know better. I would definitely put, uh, I don't know. I don't know. What would you put in the water beads, right? For the, for the hydration, but they dry out kind of quick. So, he, so for shows, we'll pack up Saturday for Sunday. If we have orders for anything other than dwarf whites or springtails and Annette, correct me if I'm wrong. Monday. If we pack up isopods Saturday, we don't sell them Sunday, but we have an order to go out Monday, we will not put those isopods away or especially use them in a shipment that's going out that could take two or three days. That's how concerned we are about the health of every single one of those isopods that we're shipping out. So that's, what, five days, six days at the most mm -hmm. in a cup? I don't get how – here's how 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 – narrow-minded I am, maybe I'll say, I'd never buy, and this is me, this is Wally Kern, Supreme Gecko, I'd never buy a nice pod at a store, ever. Justin's ever. Justin's talking about a mom and pop, so I would. that's never. something. Oh, Here's I, my I, advice for that, Justin, or if you're watching the show and you're thinking about it, my advice for that is to go back in and check with them as part of your customer service to them as a, as a purchaser from you. To go back in once a week, maybe top them off, Make yeah. sure they're doing okay. Um, if, if, I would also probably do minimal ventilation on the on the containers just so they retain that moisture. That'll be more important. That's the only way that you can do it. If you're selling to a store, if you're prepping, I would do them in like a sphagnum moss, the little water crystal. You can you can get bags of the water crystals. Make up the water crystals. Yeah. You don't have to buy the ball, the you know the special balls. Just do up the water crystals and put just a little tiny bit in a corner. And the sphagnum moss don't make it too wet. Air holes on t on top, and you hit it right on the head, Josh. Go in once a week and replace them. Or check. Yeah, on, or just check on, check go on in the there with a mister. Floor. Go in there with a little mister or a water yeah. bottle or whatever, yeah. and psh, psh, give them some yeah. leaf litter. Yeah, I don't know. Um, 
That's yeah, you might have to do that. It might take a little yeah. more legwork, but mm -hmm. uh, and I would limit I would limit at first how many you sell because you don't know what the market's going to be like. Um, worst case scenario, they give the customer your information to get with you, or they order them special from you. Yeah. So that's something I, I respect the people that are doing it. I've seen it. We have two stores by us that are mom and pops that sell ice pods from local breeders, and I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. Uh, but I do see cups that are like filled with mold. It's just white mold. Um, or that that's about the worst I see of those cups. But I, so I, that has to be something the seller's doing. We have so, a store here, you know, in, in our area, Animal House, that they're on top of it. Like, like uh, who was saying it? They're, they're the employees. employees. It. Yeah, Abby was saying the employees should walk. Yeah. If they're watching it, you know, that's a different story. I guess I was too broad in my statement. Pet smarts pet whatever boy yeah. it'd be tough for me to walk in there and buy buy isopods from a major chain like that where I, I know that they're probably not looking at them that often they have them on peg hooks now they have little containers on that go on a peg hook it's got like a little card back um i want to say josh's frogs is the one that's selling right. them here um they have the josh's frogs peg hooks and then they have the smug bug tubs which are Usually not in great shape, but that's because they've been sitting there. They're they're up on a weird shelf. Nobody can see them. It's the employees don't know about them or care about them. It's it's a feeder to them, so they don't care. So I was at a pet store the other day and I was looking at reptiles, and the temperature of the reptiles was too high, and I alerted the manager to the situation. I got it resolved. That's good. That's good. Way to go. Yeah, we um, I, I try to do the mom and pops. We don't have anything really close. Cause we're kind of saturated with the big box. So you got to kind of go out of the way. I've got to go about an hour to get to a real. Sorry. I thought I heard somebody up and about over here. They're not though. So if you give a, if you give a, um, a blue tongue skink enough dirt to burrow they're they're going to burrow just so you know, <laughs> they love it. They're going to burrow. I see her three times a week and that's when I feed two of those times I have to dig her out. So I have to go in and dig her out. So she knows she's okay with it. Um, yeah, I think, is there any other tips you have for vending the shows? I could probably do my list in five minutes, just running through okay. it. We've already covered some stuff, if you don't mind. Take as much time as you want. I'm not in any hurry. Okay. So I have two lists here, vendor and attendee. And I did okay. this in beginner, uh, intermediate, and advanced. So I'm just going to go through real quick. Vending, uh, beginner, make sure that you have healthy animals. Above and beyond everything else that you can do if you're vending a show, make sure you have healthy animals. Yeah. Make sure you have clean displays. Make sure your deli cups are clean. The biggest thing that, that bothers me at shows is to see an animal, one of my animals, sitting on the table with poop in the container. I pull them off. I put it under our little display until I have a minute where I can go and clean the, the uh, paper towel, replace the paper towel, and clean the, the deli cup. Research prices, go on Morph Market. If you're not sure what to price your animals at or your supplies or whatever, go on Morph Market and and do some research. Go to a show and research what other people are selling in your location, uh, the similar animals. Go to shows. I, we mentioned this before, but I'm going to say it again. Go to shows beforehand and take notes. Take photos. I like this. I don't like this. Um, and make sure that you study those uh, after the show and prepare yourself for your show. Intermediate uh, tips, look professional. We talked a little bit about this, but as you've done a couple of shows and you're making a little bit of money, sink that money right back into the show and prepare and look professional like a banner. Oh, especially important, a banner. Make sure you have tablecloths. Get some business cards. You can go out and get a bazillion business cards for like $25. Think about maybe doing display cases. I don't personally like display cases, but... You know, it really shows off animals. Uh, have show boxes. We talked about that. Uh, prep your an oh, This is a big one. If you're doing animals, prep your animals. Make sure they're healthy. We said that. Don't feed the day before a show. I don't feed two days before a show. So if the show is on a Sunday, I'm not feeding Friday or Saturday. I'm feeding heavy on Thursday, but I don't want. I don't want to be cleaning a lot of deli cups come Sunday, and I want. And I know the very first thing that somebody wants when they buy an animal is to feed them and, 
and see you know that interaction. Um, make, but make sure absolutely that your animals are well hydrated. It, when, once you get them in those cups, make sure that the paper towel or whatever you're keeping them in is hydrated with a little bit of water. Uh, plan your booth. Go, you know, find an eight-foot table and, and put your stuff out and see how it looks. We did that many, many times. When we changed up and had a lot of reptile supplies, gecko supplies, breeding supplies, we put it all on the table and said, does that look good? Maybe we should have a different display. I don't know. Did you read it? Did you read about how they did it for McDonald's? Is that what you did? I've seen that. Um, I've seen that show, and that's fascinating. That how they drew yeah. the lines on the parking lot. Yeah. Love it. Love it. See, in my mind, that's just like, yeah, that's that. That's what you got to do. Genius. Some, some advanced tips for vending. And then I'm going to talk about attending a show real quick too. But advanced tips for vending. Promote. Promote the heck out of it. If you watch you know, our Facebook page, uh, Instagram, I'm promoting the animals that we're bringing. I'm not saying, Hey, these are going to be $200, in but I'll show the animals and I'll say, stop by your table and say, hi, start the conversation early, get the interest going. I sell probably 10 to 20 to up to 50% of our sales are done before setting up for the show. Wow. Um, Diversity. Uh, if you're doing crusted geckos, think about other things you could bring. Can you sell food? Talk to Pangea. Talk to Rapache. Get some food on your table as well. Um, sell some dishes. You know, if you don't do good with crusted geckos, maybe you can sell twenty or thirty or forty dollars in dishes and food and other stuff like that too. Brand. So, how do you know if you're at a Josh? If you're at a reptile show, how do you know if Wally Kern is in the crowd? I don't know if Wally Kern's in the crowd. I look for a Blackhawks hat and I look for a big black and orange banner with a gecko on it. That's very professionally done. We're um, trying, yep. We're trying I to go with the voice. Or yeah, no, I look for Supreme can. Gecko only. Supreme yeah. Gecko only. Um, I mean, I don't know till I get there, but I can. I mean, you're generally in a pretty prominent position at the show, easy to find. Um, Try to, yep. Try to get that table in the same spot every single show so that people know where you're at every single show. Brand yourself as much as possible. So have the same, try to get the same color schemes. If you like red, go with a red. If you like a light green, go with a light green. We go with I like orange blue and black. And yellow. <clears throat> go with orange and black. I like yeah. blue and yellow. Okay. Too late. <laughs> Too late. Yeah, you should have said that 20 years ago. You should have said that 40 years ago when we got married. Um, attending beginners. <laughs> Have an idea of the animals you want. Don't go to a show and say, I want to buy a gecko or a reptile and yeah. not have any idea. Research the animals that you're today. picking up. Have a budget. Don't walk into a show and say, I don't know what I'm going to spend. I, I I used to go to to play slots. I would say, I'm going for, and I'm going to take 50 bucks. And when I'm out, when I'm done with the 50 bucks, I'm done. I'm done. That was my stopping point. Uh, perfect. Intermediate. That's perfect yeah. gambling. Perfect. Yes. And, and that was my $50 of entertainment for the night. Of course, you know, it was all in single, so I could have gone another round. Oh, uh, good intermediate. Lord. Set up enclosures for new animals far in advance. Maybe up to one. So if you're thinking about getting a leopard gecko, I have an enclosure set up already a couple weeks, three, four weeks beforehand, ready for that leopard gecko. Prepare for the travel home with animals. If it's cold, make sure you have a styro. Make sure you have a water bottle, and before you leave, fill the water bottle with some warm tap water. It doesn't have to be hot, warm, and put it in one of those little sandwich cooler lunch bag, lunch box things. I put them right here. I put them right here on my coat. Yep. Put it under your coat. And right don't there. plan to go shopping and out to lunch or whatever after a show if you have animals. I've had customers ask me, what do I do? You're taking oh. it in with you now. This is a live animal. If it's warm, bring a water bottle and fill it with cooler uh, water. Um, I have an emotional support gargoyle gecko now, so enjoy. <laughs> this was already mentioned in the chat, but VIP. I think two or three people were saying VIP is the way to go, especially if you're looking for something very, very special that you want that you might not find anywhere else, maybe not online, maybe only at the show. Um, talk to breeders. If you have a breeder, a vendor that's sitting behind their table eating a hamburger 
and they won't look you in the face and talk to you, move on. Move on. Talk to breeders. The good breeders will talk to you, and they'll explain the care of animals. Um, walk. Here's a big one. This is advanced at attending. If you're attending, I if I'm attending, especially the big shows, I never buy unless it's an absolutely I have to have this animal. And I probably talk, well I'll cover this in a second. <clears throat> never buy your first trip around. I walk around at least a couple of times. I try to look at all the animals, and then I make my decisions, and then I go back to the tables that I I've maybe taken notes or maybe taken their business card and thrown it in my pocket and taken the business card and said crested. Blue crested gecko. I want to buy that blue crested gecko and slipped it into my pocket. <laughs> um, and it after, was pink and blue. Thank you very much. Pink and blue. It was pink and blue. I will. I will let you know that it was a pink <laughs> and blue gecko. <laughs> know the vendors. If you're looking for an animal like a blue tongue skink or something like that, you have lists of vendors before shows. Contact a vendor and say, "Are you bringing a blue tongue skink?" about what kind of price range. Don't ask a bazillion questions like what their care is, on a, but get yeah. a feel for what they're going to bring before the show. Oh, Hold that thought on care. Hold that thought on care, everybody. It's gonna be important later. Foreshadowing. <laughs> if you're going to a show and you're not ready to purchase, <clears throat> collect cards and write notes on those cards. This person had an electric blue gecko and I can't afford it right now, but, you know, yep. maybe in a month or two, I can contact that breeder and say, hey, do you still have those? Because I can't find them anywhere else. And I see I have a business card with your name on it. Do you have any available now? Take business cards. If there's something important that you want to remember about that vendor, maybe they had a terrible display. Maybe you looked at Supreme Gecko's table and said, good God, I would never, ever, ever buy from that, that vendor ever again. Take their business card and write that down so you have that. that I, I forget stuff like immediately, but I have business cards and I have notes about stuff like that. So that's one good yeah. way to remember. Take pictures, take videos. Uh, vendors are always willing. Hey, do you mind if I just grab a quick picture of these animals? They're so beautiful. Take pictures so that you can remember stuff like that. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks. I have some advice for what to pack as a customer, as a, as a, a customer uh, at the shows. So you want to pack a tote bag, a backpack <laughs> with a tote bag in it. Tote bag with another tote bag or a backpack with a tote bag. Um, there's nothing funnier to me than seeing somebody try to juggle all their crap that they've decided to buy and have to do it through the whole show. Um, it's kind of hilarious. Uh, it, it shows that you had like you didn't bring a list of what you wanted to look for. You just were like, probably went bananas in the first fifteen shows or first fifteen minutes, and then ran back to the car because you've never seen cork pieces for this cheap. Um, the twenty dollar what is it? A twenty dollar bag you got from uh, I can't remember. I bought two of them because it was twenty dollar tote bag, a tote bag full oh. of cork pieces. You picked your own. <clears throat> I forget who had it, but anyway, I went nuts. I bought two of them, so I got $40, and I still haven't used – I've used 10% of them. It was the dumbest purchase ever. <laughs> I didn't need that many pieces of cork bar. So, yeah, I, I'll just ship some out with whatever I'm shipping out ever, if I ever ship again. Um, Pangea? Was it Pangea? Probably. That makes sense. That makes sense. <clears throat> that makes sense. Um, bring that bag uh, Throw some deodorant on. Change your socks before you go. Um, maybe some fresh underwear. You talking uh, directly to me or brush your teeth? Is, are these just general comments or you're talking specifically uh, to me? I'm gonna yeah. just say yes. Yeah, yes. Sure. sure. You take it how you answer. want to take it. Why can't it be both, Wally? Why can't it be both? <laughs> yes, shower is good, but I don't expect that much out of these people, uh, Cassandra. So uh yeah, just some deodorant. Even rub it on your shirt. You don't have to put it in your pits. You could just put it on your shirt. Um, yeah, it, it, it gets to be a real problem. In those close quarters, like I'm afraid of Schaumburg because it's going to be June and it's going to be hot and people are going to be sweaty and it's going to be awful. Um, do something. Consider other people at least a little bit. It's not about you. Okay, It's about everybody else. Oh, Bio Dude also does cork bags. Nice. I'm pretty sure it wasn't BioDude, so it must have been Pangea that I did. 
Um, watch out for people. Try not to bring your kids. I love kids. If you have kids yeah. that are six and under, leave their little punk butts with grandma. Like they don't need to be, they're going to be crying an hour in. They're crying. They're getting in the way. You've got whatever stroller or wagoner or whatever crap you have with them. There's not enough space for all that. It's insane. Like I love kids. I'm sorry. Stop. Stop bringing your kid. You're making it miserable for you. You're making it miserable for the kid. You're making it miserable for everybody else that can hear that kid. Um, it's just not good. It's not good. If you, I don't know. If it's both of you that wants to go to the show, go in shifts. I don't know what to tell you. But I would never. My kid is asking me now, can I go to the show? No. No, you can't. Because you're going to want to be there 20 minutes, and I'm going to want to be there five hours. There's no, there's no middle ground there. I'm sorry. I'll bring you pictures. You're not that into it. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's that's probably not Supreme Gecko advice, but I, you know, it's it's hard it's because a hard one. It is extremely hard because we have kids all the time that want to touch and pick up everything, and you know, we we kind of try to control it a little bit, but we're pretty, you know, free going and all. But then again, Josh, we've had kids, you know, five six years old where the parents are great and they're very. Um, over the kids and monitoring the kids and we'll bring out a gecko yeah. and the kids will touch the gecko and you can see the light you know it's just like this is the this is why i'm here right here and it's it's tough it's it's a tough call it, it is i mean you know your kid yes. you know your kid yes, yes, yes. If your yeah. kid's that exceptional kid that can handle it and hang and walk 13 miles bring that kid bring that kid it's going to be a joy that kid's going to turn on the light in other people's eyes like other adults are going to be like you mean it make kids like this they keep coming this flavor i'll take two please my kid is not that kid 20 minutes in she's like, my feet are tired can i ride on your back blah 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 i don't know anymore I, I need to go eat i gotta go potty again um it's bad i'm like i brought you the bottle i brought you the bottle to pee in why are you bothering me uh Here, here's a pack of fun dip Right? Oh, there's a spider. All right. It's that time of year again. I thought it was an ant. Um, uh, leave your animals in the container till you get home or in your car. Uh, I got to watch a woman at Tinley pull the snake right out of the canvas bag thing, and the guy told her the snake was freaking out in the container. Oh. They put it in the bag. He said, leave it alone. She turned from him right in front of me, pulled the snake out. Snake was coiled up hissing latched onto her, bit the crap out of her. It's a rat snake, I think. Um, I laughed so hard. I was in tears. She was mad at me. Her boyfriend was mad at me. I was like, I guess I put my hand up and I kept laughing. Like I, I could not stop. It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Um, did, so did you, when it hit her and held on, did yeah. you go, yes! <laughs> I, I did this while he bit her. Yes. She pulled it out, and I was like, oh, because I knew what was about to happen. Yeah. I just got out of the way because, like, she was right there. You know how crowded it is. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it was right in front. That was the best part about it. It was, like, right in front. And uh, it grabbed her because she didn't even acknowledge that it was pissed. She never, It never crossed her face at all. And it bit her, and I went, <laughs> and then the fact that I laughed out loud to her face was funnier to me. So I just kept, it was a cycle. I just kept laughing harder. Then the guy got mad. Then other people were like upset with me. She's bleeding now. Um, she's bleeding and mad. They're trying to get the snake back in the bag. I think it pooped on her too. It, it was amazing. It was amazing. Um, but the snake could have been hurt is my point. Like the reptile yes. or the animal could be hurt in that situation. You could panic, drop it, whatever. Leave it in the bag. Leave it. It's stressful for them. It's stressful for everyone around you. Just leave it in the bag. Um, or a hundred other things could have happened. Ouch, it just bit me. I just dropped it. Now it's under, yep. I don't and know where it's still... at. Or, or yep. oh my gosh, it's going crazy. And Nanette's not watching. She's looking at geckos and it hits her. And she's deathly afraid of snakes. And, yep. and now it just increases that whole fear. It's just not a good situation. It's not good. Just uh, And that's just one example. But like you could get out a gecko and it could run or it could jump to the floor and get stepped on or something or, you know, land on somebody who's afraid of geckos. Um, I don't know who that weirdo is, but they're out there. I don't know why they'd be at a reptile show, but they're out there. Um, it just, yeah, just don't do it. It's a bad idea. It's stupid. 
It's stupid. Yeah, you're going to have some big, giant, shaved Yeti laughing at you. Um, <laughs> like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's not a good look. It's not a good look. And I will laugh at you. I will, right to your face. Um, yeah, just and be considerate of whoever's yeah. around. Like, try to do traffic like you're driving. If everybody did traffic like they were driving, stay to the right. Look at the things on your right. No crossing back and forth. No, you know, whatever. It, it's too crowded. It's too cramped. Just pay attention to what you're doing. You know, if you have to stop, you have to stop. But stay to your right in your right lane. Other people going this way are in the left lane. That's it. That's all. Turn on your blinkers. Um, <laughs> say excuse me. Say thank you. Blah, blah, blah. I think if you saw a cool pretty. animal and you want to, and you've already passed it and you want to go back and look at it, just do the beep, 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 and back up and look at it. No, you got to go back around. You got to loop. Oh, okay. You can't. okay. There's no reverse. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah, no, it's, uh, it can be real bad. If you do stand at a booth for your friend that you've been waiting to see for a year, uh, be ready to shut up and sit down while they're not sit down, but shut up and stand to the side while they're doing a sale. Like customers are buying stuff. That's why they're there. Yes. Yeah. They want to see you, but shut, I'm reminding myself, I'm going to go back and watch this before Schomburg. Um, Cause some of these people, I, I feel so bad cause I just bugged the crap out of them and it's the best. Um, I think I made some sales for Ryan Marshall last year. I put my marketing skills to work. Oh yeah. For him. Yeah. It was pretty great. I was chatting up with the table. I, I would, I would in a heartbeat, Ryan, if you're still watching, I, I would work that booth, bring you guys some bratwurst. It'd be great. Be great. Um, a legless lizard. Yeah. Nanette, how do you feel oh. about legless lizard? She said, no, no. blue tongue skink. No, She's... not even a blue tongue skink. She starts. They are very snakely. When uh, leopard geckos do their tail wag, oh, we're done. You yeah. know when they're ready to breed and they're you're with the female and the tail starts wagging. Done. She's. I'm out. <laughs> really? I'm I have yeah. goosebumps right now. That is even nice. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's a real thing. All right, I'm gonna stop teasing the net about it. Yeah, if that's that bad, yeah. I'm done teasing her about it. So it Frank, bad. knock it off. Knock it off, Frank. It's over. <laughs> it's clearly traumatic. It's for done. some reason. Um, I think because of the advice that I have, <laughs> we're not going into that tonight. Um, uh huh. Uh -huh. No, someday Josh will hear the story. No, probably not. I can't wait. I can't wait. Oh, no. I'm surprised Wally doesn't have a black eye tonight. He has, he has said some things that I cringed. I was like, oh, it's coming. Oh, he's getting swatted. <laughs> you won't see Wally out alive for three weeks, though, because yeah. he'll have to recover. <laughs> yeah, bruise marks. Uh, Abby, about blue tongues, my wife has acknowledged, and I think the same thing. Like, they are the missing link that we found between snakes and lizards. Like, they are exactly in the middle of snakes and lizards. They're very snake like. Um, yeah. If you gave snakes little legs, they're just not as like limber, right? If you gave a snake legs and arthritis, that's a blue tongue skink. <laughs> so. <laughs> How do I put that thank on the No, thank you. <laughs> man, oh, man, man, oh man. I thought he was my friend. I really did. Kind of liked him. Frank. Right. You're, you're, oh, you're like Frank. now like a number four on her list. You're, you're, yeah, you drop down you're right. ways. Someone can send an a fake snake. Sna fake snake hand that has a pop-up snake mechanism. Frank, you're going to get murdered. Wow. I shouldn't say that word on YouTube, but... Uh -uh. Wow. Wow. Frank's been pushing buttons yeah. tonight. I won't be opening any boxes that come in the mail now. Frank's going to get some rat poison waffles mailed to him. <laughs> <laughs> um, we said the word care earlier, and I jumped on it. I was waiting for you to say yeah. the word care all night long. So where, do you have any more tips before I go to closing? Have a candy dish on your table. Anything people, to start people, the conversation. People like that, and if they've got kids <clears throat> with them and they're just off, sometimes yeah. just that candy piece of sucker or have stickers that are special for kids. I bought a bunch of stickers that are reptile, and 
I give them to kids when I when I can just tell that there's a little they can't have this. No, you're not getting that. I'll say, can they have a free sticker? And they're like, oh yeah. And then they're they're all happy. I'm gonna try to remember to bring you my surplus. I have a bunch of bug stickers now. Oh, um, I've been handing out stickers left and right. Yeah. That, well, I mean, you're gonna use them. I have my desktop covered now, and I have a bunch left. So I got I myself a bunch of bug stickers, and then my wife got me a bunch of Danny DeVito stickers, and so I. I'm good now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it, you know, is awesome. Um, okay. So we don't have any more tips. Have a box of candy or a bag of candy on your, yep. the wrap individually wrapped. Don't put out like a bowl of wrapped. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Don't put up a bowl of M&Ms like a freak. You know? Yeah. No, no, don't do that. Tootsie roll pops. Do Tootsie roll pops. That's, I do Tootsie roll to pops and I do Tootsie rolls and Tootsie roll pops for kids. Perfect. And a bowl of raisins. Perfect. No. No bowl of raisins? No bowl of raisins. Right I'm trying to meal? think if there's anything, anything on here. I would get, get that back. raisin clot. Let's get back on task. Back on task. What was that? Get back on yeah. task. Nanette, come on. You yeah. know what show you're on by now. You've been on the show almost as much as Wally. Recollect yeah. and let's go here, buddy. So, yeah, <laughs> that's got to go. Uh, we're just doing the closeout. So we have a new project I'm working on and I'm calling it out now so I can get some help because I need some help with this. So I want to set up a website um, that has, there's a lot of great information out there on animals and how to keep them and the science of them and taxonomy and everything. And there's a lot of people like citizen science guys that are putting this information out for free. Um, what I propose that I, well, what I'm going to do is get a team together <laughs> that's not just going to be me make a website where we can compile links to everyone's page that has this information we're not going to steal it we're not going to take their information we're just put a link with their permission um and if they want to host care sheets and stuff because they don't have their own website or they don't want to do all of that we can post them there we'll have our own compilation of uh information uh links to science docs um like actual you know uh, documents and scientific papers, um, all of that. I think to make a one-stop shop, uh, and this will all be uh, vetted through some experts <laughs> before we post it. So it's not going to be just my friend Joe kept smoky oak isopods for a month or an isopods. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Smoky oak millipedes <laughs> for a month. Um, he kept yellow zebras. Nobody will ever have a yellow zebra care sheet on my page. Um, Come on. Have a good night, Ashley. This one went a little long. Bye, Ashley. Going a little long. Uh, so, yeah. So, if you know of web design and have some free time, uh, like I said, this is going to be a free thing. No money involved. Uh, it would be great. I'm doing some research now on how to do that myself, but I'm not. I have a lot going on, and I don't really have the skills so far. <laughs> so, so far. It'll be a bit. Yeah, this isn't going to happen overnight, but um, if you want to get on board with that, let me know. Throw me a PM. Um, through Facebook. Uh, if you don't have me on Facebook, I'm Johannes Washington on uh, the Iso Buddies Facebook group. Um, you send me a friend request, get ready for a lot of political bullshit. Um, sorry in advance, but that's what it is. Uh, <laughs> so, but I would really like to get this to be a thing because I think it has saved a lot of people a lot of web searches um, to have as much of that information in one spot as possible. And I mean, all. I am imagining it as all exotics, not just like isopods or millipedes or detrivores or whatever, like whatever, everything uh, in one spot. So uh, if you want to get involved in that, let me know. Other than that, uh, buy Wally a cup of coffee or Nanette um, or send Nanette some random cocoa bombs. Um, it's still cocoa season. It is. Still, I have it every morning. I still didn't get one, but that's okay. That's all right. Uh, uh -huh. Well, you should get into lawn shrimp. They're the future cuke. Lawn I shrimp do, are cool. I do lawn I darts. For a while. Is What's that up? close enough? I do lawn darts. Is that close enough? You still have lawn darts? The yeah. FBI hasn't come for you? Doesn't everybody? They're outlawed now. When, outlaws, when lawn darts are outlawed, only yeah. outlaws will have lawn darts. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Um, but yeah, guys, have a good one next week. Uh, I don't remember again. I think it's it's not Ryan Marshall. I wanted to say it was Ryan Marshall again, but that was last week. 
Um, I'm, I'm even we'll back next week. Oh, it's not You're me. Even the, I'm even days, so it's not me. It's not you? Yeah. Oh, and I hope everybody had a good April Fool's. Did anybody do any good pranks? Who is it? I'm the worst, I'm the worst host of a show that ever lived. Let me open it on my phone where I can't read it. Oh, we're going to talk about terrarium building next week. Sarah oh. Jennings and I are going to build a terrarium live on the show. Oh, um, well, yeah. We are. Yep. So I'm building mine for ice pods and springtails um, to make a better setup for my uh, woolly mammoth springtails because they are awesome. Uh, go to springtails.us and get yourself some woolly mammoths. They are the best springtail I've ever had. They're huge and they're woolly and they're active. So um, guys, I'll see you. We got to get Nanette to bed. It's been two hours. It's been a good one. Have a good one. We'll see you next week. All right. Love you guys. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.